Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. I'm busy. Stay busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am, of course, of course, <laughs> your host, <laughs> Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, aka the Bald Nigga Bombshell, has entered your screen, your headphones, the podcasting studio, and he goes by the name of Chinedu, aka the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie, Armand Sadler. I'm here with the gang. They uh, One of them is going to do their special AKs this week. <laughs> the, the other one. I'm not ready yet. We, we, we're uh, going to slowly progress there. So hand it over. <clears throat> What's good, y'all? It's your girl, Miss Two Bs, AKA the Panamanian Princess, AKA Miss Bring It to Your Front Door, mm-hmm. AKA Miss Inside But Outside, mm-hmm. AKA Rarely Seen But Always Noticed. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You, you ate that, and, and you did too. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. There we no, go. that was actually that was really that was good. Yeah. That was accurate. Every word. There we go. Very accurate. Like I could have, I couldn't have wrote that better myself. That's that's what I, I love. A happy customer. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, our guy Will, aka Mister. Are you sure? AKA Mister. It gets biblical. AKA Apple Music's own. AKA where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. And we, the three of us, are motherfucking stay busy. Pam. Learn it, love it, live it, respect it. Um, but <laughs> good to see y'all. Always a pleasure. Hope y'all had wonderful weekends. We kind of talked a little off mic, but I don't think I heard about what y'all did this weekend. So, what did y'all do this weekend? Um, I went to see Music Soul Child yesterday. Oh my god! Wow. Hey, what yeah. the fuck? Where at? Afro Punk City Winery. Okay. Oh, well, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Well, <laughs> he just dropped that on. Did, it was like a date, or did you just go? It was. Okay, oh, fine. See, I knew. Yeah, okay, you see okay. how like yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. about to say. Like, you see how niggas it think? was. It was. It <laughs> was. I was like, hey, fire. Yeah, because I, I I went to Neil. He did a listening party there two summers ago. So like, I figure that's a place like the vets do events at, but. It's also a nice day spot. So, okay, okay. First of all, that was my first time there. Oh. So, I really didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. But by the grace of God, you know, I always got to show up mm-hmm. and show out. So, I was dressed for the occasion. But I was just like, oh, this is cute. Mm-hmm. And music, like, he is really him. And you mm-hmm. know, like, when you get older and songs just, like, the lyrics of songs just hit yes. differently. Yes. Like, I damn near wanted to cry in that shit. I guess. <laughs> was, that, was that your first time seeing him? Or... Um, I saw him at the one music festival, like in mm. 2019 or 2018. I forgot what year that was, but you know, a festival performance it's versus different. a yeah. yeah. It's different. I mean, that's different. still like a bucket list artist. I Absolutely, like. yeah. Like a lot of people haven't seen, yeah, especially our age. Yeah, I saw seen. that he performed at City Winery last year, mm. so I just randomly searched like Music <clears throat> Soul Child City Winery and saw that he was performing again. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, then, and and what, then told the was it expensive the random man hey take me here <laughs> was it was it expi- like what was the tick was it you know we got motion come on yeah, okay yeah, okay my bad just, I'm sorry you just gotta find a public email the hey. only thing we paid for well he paid for was the meal mm-hmm. so I'm talking about that's mm-hmm. a great that's, that's a great spot mm-hmm. you know and yeah that's a great spot that's a great spot what you really did nice. Friday we had like a nice little uh nice little listening at a bar like friends and family type of little thing for the yeah, album yeah, and then um. After that, I was chilling all weekend. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I was just happy the album's out and just yeah. wanted to chill and like, yeah, had a little get together on 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 Friday and it was funny. Like somebody said, yeah, I expected to be home at like two a.m. or like something like that, and like niggas got home at like five and like six. So I was like, I was like, whenever you have one of those nights, Lizzy Summer, <laughs> I need like a especially the older I get, I need like a maybe like a day and a half, yes. Of rest the next day, because you'd be like, "What the hell?" Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, as he alluded to, play Cash Cobain is out now, but you should also play "Stay Busy" with Armand Sather on all That's your favorite right. audio platforms and on your YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. You know what to do. Our podcast only fans, patreoncom backslash Stay Busy Pod. Subscribe, find our unhinged, unfiltered, raw but fun content. Let's jump into this chat. We got a lot to cover. Um, last week, 
uh, we saw an announcement that Instagram <clears throat> will be trying to uh, reinvent MySpace by allowing you to play music on your profiles. And I don't know about y'all. It's been like two years and I still don't even have the feature where you could put a little note on your like. What? Yeah, like, you, you know, you know, when you go to the messages and you see yeah. people's notes, I, I don't have that on, on my main account. You're verified. Oh, wait, that no, it? that doesn't mean anything. The verified yeah. account that I manage has notes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll hit up my meta contact really for annoying. you. Thank you, thank you. Because I'll be seeing everyone post them, so I wouldn't do them a lot. I'm like, it's just cool to know you have it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when it took forever for me to get voice notes on Twitter, I was pissed. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't use it now, but the first week I had it, I was I was letting voice notes off. And I was like, it's kind of weird. I'm not going to do it no more. But yeah, so I also don't have the music feature already. I've seen some people who have it, so I'm, I'm hating on them. But if you have the feature or if you were to have the feature... What song would y'all put on y'all profile to restore the 2007 MySpace vibes? Well, I have the feature. Okay. And I put Shorty Like Mine. Love it. I love it. Yeah. I love Damn, that. Damn, you snapped. You yeah, already have the feature? Yeah. Uh, that's lit. 2007? <laughs> Shorty Like Mine, a classic, too. That's Feel me? Classic. Like. Oh, bro. 2007. I don't know, man. Shorty Like Mine's a good one. And that was a Ooh, beat. You know what I, you know what I probably pick, bro? You know Marco Polo, Soldier yes. Boy. Yes, never one. been oh fake because all the girls God. love official. <laughs> S-O-D because <laughs> girls love initials. Mm. I'm on another <laughs> level. I'm in my zone. What? Black car, white rims. Can they both get along? Oh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No. <laughs> That's no. my shit, bro. <laughs> Nigga. No. We just had a moment, right? Like, yeah, man. Like, it was crazy. It's like It classic. came to me like a... Like, I got hit by God or something. I'm like, nigga, Marco Polo. <laughs> that's, like, that's such that's a great song. Yeah, such what a great song. Um, so, I, I'm trying to think back to the songs I had. I know I had, remember when DJ Khaled, like, first broke through and he had a Holla At Me Baby? That was when he was first doing those mega songs. Like, yeah. so that, that was one of the ones I had. If I was to go, like, more modern or, like, rather, like, another song from that era, what did I really like back then? I, I, I was a lover boy. I was, like, all, 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 all them Neo classics. I probably owe, like, a... Uh, Miss Independent or uh, <laughs> or uh, Because of You something like that to like when, when, when girls pop on my page they know like yo this nigga this nigga you know what I'm saying he don't just play the rap shit like he like he like some Ooh, I would also some have... lovey dovey R&B but that's some Ooh. Riz right there cause mm-hmm. that's how I got me? my first boyfriend you know me? cause he put shorty like mine on his MySpace mm-hmm. put my picture on his um layout Ooh. and had my work my name falling off the screen okay me and him never even had a convo at this time I heard that he was interested so when I accepted the request and I saw all that shit. I was just like, "Damn, nigga!" This nigga t- took the fishing rod, said, Phew. "No, <laughs> for, like he was telling people I'm his girl already." So I was like, "I guess I am." Manifest, you know, manifest. Damn. But yeah, I'm trying to think of something more recent. Honestly, one of my d- favorite Drake songs ever. I'd, I'd probably pick "Lose You" as my as like if I had to go something more current. I go "Lose You." Uh, I'll how do about find your, your love? Find your love, Drake. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to do "Kiss Kiss" by Chris Brown. Ooh. I didn't know that either. You and your Sticking to the classics. I love, that. I love that. We'll have to do a throwback slide deck day. Yes. I've been wanting to do more themed ones. So mm. I, I think next week or, well, not next week. We'll be out next week, but we'll have something for y'all. But the, when we come back, especially with Fergie here, we'll do throwbacks. Yeah. Or like MySpace themed <laughs> slide deck. I like that. I like that. All right. Excellent. Excellent. But yeah, so all y'all who have the feature, Miss 2Bs, I'll, I'll exclude you from this. The rest of y'all who have the feature, fuck y'all. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm hating. I, I will be judging our songs. I'm literally going to DM you, eh, five out of ten. Like, with the, with the, uh, the fucking p- p- picture of Keith Lee, too. Like, like this. Five out of ten. Pick a better song. Um, but moving on. This week in music and entertainment really highlighted that while people call this the year of hate, it is also the year of crash outs and bluntness and honesty mm-hmm. and just taking everything to the web. Shit that don't need to be taken to the web is just being taken there. So, um, these hip hop accounts and these fan pages and all that, that constantly monitor who follows who and who unfollows who they discovered that Nicki Minaj unfollowed ice spice and JT. Nikki did a live stream. What's what's the platform she uses for her live stream? Station, recently? Head. station head. I haven't wow. listened to them. I only see the clips. They I haven't posted. either. Um, but she was on her station head talking about rappers who signed to these r- white record labels. And it led people to think about, Hmm, who was she trying to sign recently that didn't sign with her? And then you think about Ice Spice and how when they did the Pr- Princess Diana remix, Nikki says heavy on it at the beginning. Everyone thought Ice was signed there. It was later discovered she signed elsewhere. Um, Ice Spice's recent Rolling Stone interview where she um, talks about how sh- her texts were exposed, calling Nikki ungrateful and delusional and saying like, 
we're good. We don't talk much. We're not close. She's busy, but we're good. All that. And I was like, mm, okay. Um, all, all of that. So, and so then you think about Nikki's rant and it's like, all right, well, this has to be about Ice Spice. And also JT got unfollowed too. And their relationship has been very on and off. Like I think Nikki brought her out in Boston this year. And they, then they were beefing before that. And then JT was on the queen mix of super freaky girl, all this. So messy times. Um, but Nikki is really like riding with this heavy on it shit. Like the upcoming version of pink Friday too will feature heavy on it artists only, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know who, who signed. The I was about to, I was about to ask you cause I feel like you would know. I, I, I know one L- London Hill. I don't know. Who the that. producer dude. Um, uh, uh, who, who is it? Take away. Yeah, him. Oh, he's cold. Like that's cool. He's I've fire. been listening to Tate for years. He's cold. Yeah. He's cold. Like. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, because he he was on the original album too. He's on the the song of Wayne, R&B. I think. R and B. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that song. Tate's dope. Yeah. I fuck Tate. with Tate. Okay, that's a crazy signing actually. When you like, when I like, you step back and look at it, like it was. It's like it's crazy that she found him and signed him. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's like a I don't know. It's a cool connection. Absolutely. Him having heavy on it, like in his like that being his click or his label or like. That's hard. I don't know. Because Nikki's never signed artists before, right? I don't think artists should be signing artists. I, I, well, I, I completely a, agree. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole different conversation. I completely agree. But yeah, we all agree on that. Fact. I do <laughs> feel like of all of the artists right now who have labels, Nikki's consistency in selling music well, Yeah. I think that she'd probably be the best person to learn from. Like, you got some people signing people who don't even got motion like that themselves. Very true. She's been a consistent presence within music has a hit every year or every other year. So I think if anyone, granted, her relationship management is not the best. <laughs> she, she's she's uh, ostracized a lot of people. A lot of her friendships have, you know, fizzled out. So that's a whole other concerning thing. But I think there's a lot to learn from the music business side from her. So she also has a beast of a fucking, like, movement that will support anything that she yeah, does. Yeah, exactly. So signing with her would be like, Money. Exactly, but it's also dangerous to try to bank on her movement yeah. to mm-hmm. try to like propel yeah. your own career. Yeah, that's yeah. what Ice tried to do, and mm-hmm. it's just not working. And despite although JT got unfollowed, she like built her core audience by yeah. doing that like club the club tour. Mm-hmm. So she's not relying on the barbs. She has her juvies, yeah. but um, juvies of that that's what I'm, they're called. Yeah, what? they're called juvies. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I never even knew that. You learn a new thing every day. Yeah. Oh, I'm in her little community group on Twitter. Oh my so, God. Yo, yeah. those are nuts. Very. Yo, I and this is completely unrelated, but um Joe Budden Podcast has like a, a JB TV community. I'm not in it. It's always public. But yeah, but I see all the tweets. These niggas be like arguing with each other over who can host spaces and who hosts spaces better and who creates content from the Joe Budden Podcast content better. Like mm-hmm. these niggas be like, they're like they be potting about the pod, making reaction videos about the pod, and beefing within the community as to who is more connected, like, all this shit. I'm like, yo, y'all are nuts. No one man should have all that power. Bro, like, that's nuts. <laughs> like, hey, I'm, I, I would love to have a stay busy high, but, like, be normal. Like, yeah, don't don't fight with niggas over who can make content about us better. Like, fight over me. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. You, you fight over Mr. B's. But, yeah, it's just like, don't... don't Granted, I, I do think the community features is it's cool. Like it's cool. Like Need to Know has one. I'm in theirs. Uh, the the New York Yankees have one. There's like sports betting one. So there's ways to use it. But when I see these Joe Budden fans going at one another, and it's they're and they're all ultimately nobodies, I'm like, this is this is just dark. it's like a multiverse paradox of like podcasting Nick like communities uh, yeah, about communities. Yeah, it's like nuts, bro. It's like blowing my mind right now. Like I'm trying to wrap my head around it and it's like niggas potting about the pot saying that like whoa. Yeah. Like, too much. What? Yeah, just st- stirring the pot and like a couple of them have gotten acknowledged on the show too. So I think that just boost their heads. We're like, oh I'm doing something right, so let me keep doing it. I'm like, yep. no, you nigga need to find a job. <laughs> find a lover, read a book, shower, all that stuff. But um yeah, so this this Nikki stuff is interesting. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing who. <laughs> can't wait to learn who the other heavy on it artists are. Right. Um. Because she she did like a couple deluxe versions of Pink Friday too, but it was like only one or two more songs, and it was with big names. Fifty was on one of the deluxes. She had another future song. Um. She dropped uh some other shit. I think it was was it with uh, Monica. I think Monica got a extra song. So interested in seeing how long it's gonna be. Hmm. But um yeah man, uh, messy times, messy messy times. It is, and I just <laughs> want to know why JC got unfollowed. And I yeah. know that like Uzi is instrumental in like their 
reconstellation. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure, like, you know, if it can really go too far. Because I know Nikki does feel a loyalty to Uzi. Yeah, they're the super good. They worked together a bunch. Yeah, and she said, like, he was, like, one of the few people who were genuinely, who was genuinely in her corner during, like, the hate train era. Mm-hmm. So um, it's just strange, especially this coming after the whole Young Miami thing. Yeah. Um, fans are assuming that she's working with Megan behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Nikki. Um, JT. JT. Mm. Is Nick, Meg would never work. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> what? <laughs> that shocked me. I was like, hold but on. But fans are assuming that, you know, they reconnected. And I'm going to be honest with you. I do think that JT does need to reconnect with her peers. Mm. And, like, I, I know the Nikki connection is, like, a dream. But, um... It comes with a lot. Like, if you fuck with Nikki, a lot of people don't fuck with you. It's like... Do you want to be able to collab with the field? Or do you just want to collab with Nikki? Because Nikki don't pop out a lot either, so... Like, she's a mom, she's mm-hmm. married, y'all not on the same frequency. It just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. But like you said, she is the right person, and I would love to see her develop mm-hmm. artists and even write for some. Um, I remember that Megatron challenge that happened. Like, it was supposed to lead to someone getting signed, and then yeah. it didn't. So, like, I'm not sure about, like, the business part of things. I'm pretty sure she's learned a lot, especially yeah. now. But, like, I would love to see her develop. Especially like a new New York female rapper. Yeah. So somebody caught some motion off that, right? The Megatron. I feel like I learned about someone through that. I don't remember. Who. I know she signed that London Hill girl, but it's like everything else is about the other mainstream girls. So it's like, mm-hmm. is London Hill still signed to Heavy on it? What is like, you know, what what's her deal? Like, what is it about? I'm I'm not too sure to be honest. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, guess we'll find out. But yeah, that is that. And more crash out news. Lil Yachty, Oof. the the boat is seemingly sinking, um, <laughs> <laughs> perception wise. <laughs> it's a, a Titanic. Wah, wah. <laughs> Gotta pat myself on the back for that one. <laughs> um, Alrighty, what just what, it's just been like a lot for him. It started with his comments on the beef, and then it was the Mister Hot Spot thing with Super Soak, and then it was him saying I'm done with the internet, and then. <laughs> He's not really done with the internet. And so this week... That's the worst. This week, he was fighting two different battles. I don't know if y'all watched the Yachty podcast, but um, he's got a co-host named Mitch. Super funny dude. And they had Key Glock on the pod this week. And they were just talking about some topic, just essentially talking about, like, niggas who kind of got to get it out the mud in very unconventional, illegal ways. And Mitch was basically speaking about how, like, yeah, like, niggas should try to kind of find a better way. And Yachty, in a very questionable move, basically called out Mitch. He was like, bro, if you didn't have me, you would be doing that. Like, you had the benefit of a friend who was famous and connected and, you know, you was living with me and I kind of put you in position and all that. And Mitch, like, Mitch acknowledged that, but he was just like, yeah, like, and with that wisdom, I'm trying to pass it on to other people. But just the way Yachty went about it, it's like, it's kind of like when you with your homeboys and you yalla with girls and, like, when one of your homeboys clowns you in front of girls, and, and I've had friends who do that, so I know how annoying it is. Like, bro, we could have had this conversation privately. Like, you you don't got to do this in front of other people. And, like, Yachty's podcast got, like, probably, like, millions of viewers a week, something like that. I don't know. So, like, doing that in, in front it's of you. It's decent. People see it. It's nuts. It's, it's pretty it. nuts. And then, especially, like, the clip circulated on Twitter had, like, like people see it. millions of views on Twitter. And Yachty's just been such a hot topic lately that, like, anything he says or does that's controversial or makes him look bad, it's going to get even more visibility. So that happened, and he he just ended up um, uh, crashing out on, on Twitter. <laughs> on his birthday. Uh, yeah, on, like, yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I saw the video, it was, like, Thursday that's night. His, his birthday was Friday. Um, but some, something else happened with Caribou. I, I, we talked about Caribou a few weeks ago and how she left Concrete. Yachty said things were a- amicable. Of course, niggas always say that at first, thinking that, you know, more won't happen. And I don't remember what exactly sparked him to get so angry, but he's on IG Live saying, Caribou, you're a terrible person. You treat people badly. I wrote everything for you. Uh, He said, fuck Mitch, fuck the podcast. I didn't want to do it. All that. Like, it was just just like very like (sighs) there's so much power in putting the phone down and logging off. So much power. Like, I, I. And I, I don't want to always put myself in in in, in the, the topic or conversation, but it's like there's no better frame of reference than yourself. It's like for me, I arguing on social media is stupid to me. I don't I, I don't do it. And if someone disrespects me, I'll kind of just hit them with like that like that like one comment, like, yo, you stupid, you ugly, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and then I'll, I'll be done with it. I'm not going back and forth on social media. 
So the the concept of like yelling into your phone to make a Twitter voice note about someone or yelling into Instagram live is just insane to me. And again, I, I'm not a celebrity with millions of followers. So like they're in a different position where people are always talking about them. They feel that pressure. I get it. But it's just like, bro, handle this like elsewhere we we don't need to be in the group chat <laughs> like we, we like yo, 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 yo like think about it like have you ever argued with someone in a group chat with other niggas around it's that like should be funny I, I don't even like saying certain stuff that could be interpreted as if i'm trying to like go at it go back and forth with someone in a group chat like we don't need an audience like let's 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 take this privately so that's yeah. that, that's just my view of it and i feel like at any level of your life whether you're someone in my position in our positions or if you're famous like bro like we don't we don't need to see all this like we don't need to know all this like and it's one thing if she came out and said stuff about yadi and he's defending himself but i mean even then i'm like take the high road be the bigger person i know it's not fun sometimes but, it ain't ever fun <laughs> but honestly yeah like like huh. usually the person who takes the high road walks away feeling like yo i should have mm, that's I why i never do it <laughs> but it's just like it's this snowball for him it's just one thing after another after another after another it's just too much. And um, so how how'd you guys feel when you saw the initial Mitch clip and then the Yachty crash out on voice notes and Instagram live? You got all these aggregation accounts <laughs> screenshotting you, posting yeah. them, reposting one another. Like, bro, this shit moves so fast. Too fast. Um, and it also changed the way we work. Yeah. <laughs> Very Honestly, annoying. that's why Very I don't annoying. like to write anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, when I saw the initial clip, you know, I've been around men that will try to, you know, make their homie the butt of the joke mm -hmm. or, like, joke at their expense or, like, just try to embarrass them. And I always thought that that was lame behavior. Yeah. Um, And, like, he was real respectful and real meek on telling Key Glock to put out the blunt in his own crib. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna... I, as a woman, if I'm potting in my crib and Key Glock pull up, I'm like, yo, bro, hold on. Out that real quick? Mm -hmm. My bad. We ain't doing that in here. Yeah. I'm going to make it real clear. I'm not going to be on some, like, joking, <laughs> joking shit because yeah. I'm scared of the nigga mm -hmm. or think, like, he got his grip on him or something. And then, like, to disrespect a friend is crazy. But to be honest with you, that is all a result of just, like, a lack of confidence mm -hmm. because Yachty is no North Star. I would never be following him around, allowing him to dress me or write anything mm -hmm. for me. And the fact that he even has all this visibility with, like, no recent hits. And I don't care about that last screaming shit that he just put out. Uh, that shit is not a bop. Nobody wait, in the what? hood was, talking about... You talking about Popolin? Yeah. Sh good. Strike was good. Whatever. <laughs> Strike was good. We don't care about that shit. And, and, any other song with J. Cole, Secret Recipe, that 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 that, that, that one was good and it had motion. Holster. What? Holster was crazy, too. Wait, mm -mm. which one? Holster. Oh, yeah, that was Strike, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, shit. strike parentheses holster. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, well. that wasn't. It just but, wasn't but enough it, for Yachty. Yeah, Yachty to stuff be. is not for you. Yeah, he's just like he's too visible, like, and he's just so corny. Like, like I remember Bobby Shmurda doing a live once, and him saying like the music industry is giving revenge of the nerds, mm. and I think about <sighs> Yachty when I saw mm. that live. It, it is interesting. He's so polarizing. It's like people think he's absolute trash, but then you look at the artists who co-sign him, you got. The Drakes, you got the Coles, you got the Kanye's, you got people within his All class. All questionable people. <laughs> but people who, who have such cachet within the music industry that it's like, all right, well, if Drake is going to have this nigga producing mad songs on his album, you know, but I'll, it ain't, I'll pay it ain't hitting. We, that, those are the songs that we criticized. And then he had to put out a deluxe version without the shit he was doing. And then we're I like, loved, all right, this is what we talking about here. I loved Polar Opposites and uh, Away From Home. Of course you did. But those are actual good. Don't, don't do that don't do that because <laughs> of course you're, you did you're, you're minimizing my point by, by hitting me with the of course Drake fan no yes, the actual good songs <laughs> nah it, 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 it mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I think Gotti he needs to do better, a better job and people just need to be a little bit more confident in themselves and mm -hmm. not be trying to follow people just because they have a little bit of motion like Gotti is not someone who I would follow ever for anything I won't even follow him on Twitter mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't really care about the Mitch stuff. Like the Mitch stuff was like whatever. Like the 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 Yachty and and Caribou stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that right there is low key kind of interesting, and it's like a it's a it's like a 
it's like an Aesop fable or some shit. It's like a, it's like a story that people <laughs> need to like artists and everybody need to like watch and just see and like yeah. watch watch how this plays out. And this is like you know this is why you don't sign to artists. Mm-hmm. This is why you don't you know is now this nigga's talking about he's nine hundred thousand dollars in the hole, mm-hmm. which he might be. Yeah, yeah. You see, like, he might expensive. like yeah he yeah. might be like like real shit and like that type of shit. Like when he said that. I already know he was seeing red. Like, mm-hmm. my nigga was like... <laughs> nah, he was... Like, he, he sounded like pissed, he was gonna bro. cry at some point. Bro. bro. Like, he really... And then the voice... Stuttering, yelling, like... The voice night to the girl, the Camille girl, which I kind of know in some weird way. Mm-hmm. It was like, bro, he was hot, bro. bro he's like, Whenever, bitch, bitch, you ain't... You ain't bro. Bitch. <laughs> listen, bro. Listen, bro. He was doing that. He was doing that. And also, he was doing something like, as a man, especially a black man, whenever you hear your nigga say... Yo, you better get this girl. You better get. If he said he's about to violate. He's about, he's about to violate, violate yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he's it like charging up. He said yeah. it like three times in a row. I'm like, yeah. bro, he's yeah. like mad, mad, yeah. like, like yeah. Mitch. The bitch yeah. get, about go to get her. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. for real. So like, yeah. I, I I was like, I was just surprised he was that mad yeah, on, was... On, on 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 social media. Like, and we everybody saw it fuming. Yeah. Like, man, it's like you he can't was take it away. pissed. My you nigga. can't take anything away these days. My nigga said, literally, you get if, her? If, if it's out for thirty seconds, <laughs> someone has already used one of those downloader apps, took mm-hmm. it, and it's oh yeah, people can get it. Like, like yeah, it's man. Because I was like, I was asking, yeah, we was in the group chat talking about. I was like, damn, it's like, is it still up? It's like, no, someone deleted. Like, he deleted. It. It's like, bro, somebody had it. Bro, like, somebody already. Yeah, you you like, gonna find it? Biz it. got it. Go on live, by <laughs> yeah, yeah, fact. People yeah. get it like asap, bro. Yeah. Yeah, um, we did see Mitch and Caribou both respond, and Mitch basically said, "Like, that's our relationship. We get we get feisty with each Pussy. other." I'm like, oh, Jesus. "That's not." I, and I I I, I get Pussy. it. I have friends who I extend tough love to, but not like that, and not publicly. I'm not doing that with my boy on a podcast that I know millions of people listen to. We could talk about that after. I'm gonna be like, "Yo, bro, like." You up there get given all that wisdom, but like you wouldn't be here without me. And, and even then, I wouldn't say it the way that it was said. Like no. it's just it's a different conversation. Like yeah, he was I, I, I get to be funny. Yeah, he's trying to sun him. Yeah, he was trying yeah. to be like, and it's yeah. like potting really is performance art. It's entertainment. I'm not gonna get my entertainment points off of you. Like that's just that's 100%. that's that's not my vibe. But yeah, he was pretty much like you know we're we're, we're gonna be fine. It's all good. Blah blah blah. And no, nobody made me. I'm I'm not gonna speak on what I know or what I've heard, but. I'm gonna just leave it there. Um, <laughs> uh, uh-uh, wait, hold on. Nah, nah, nah. It's, it's, it's. It, I don't think it's my business to share. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's. Yeah. Patreon. It's probably Patreon. Right. Maybe. Um, <laughs> as for Caribou, she because Yadi with her, he talks about how he wrote her on the radar freestyle. He wrote Which a bunch of dark. other songs for her. Uh, he he or some reference tracks leaked, and to me, it was like. I I was confused when the on the radar freestyle like went viral and everyone was hyping it up. I was like, like this is not that great. And and Yachty's written great songs in the past. He's he wrote Act Up. Uh, he he wrote a bunch of other stuff that I like. Can't think of it off the top of my head. But like yeah, Yachty can write well for other people. But this didn't move me. The way she rapped it didn't move me. And and it's something. It's like sometimes you you hear the reference and it might be better. It, that the reference didn't move me either. So I was like, all right, I guess. But. She pretty much said, like, nobody made me. You didn't write these things for me, blah, 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 all that. So um, She called this nigga by his real name. Miles. She, Miles, said, she yeah, said, Miles. Yeah. Oh, put this on. <laughs> she said, put it on something. But I was, right when I saw Miles, I was like, yo, she, this nigga that's, about to that's get how you mad know you again. Really they mad. fucking. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I don't know about that. Well, I mean, well hey. not no more. Well, <laughs> not that one. But, okay. But, yeah, it's, it's just. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's hey, a Trion. lot. It's a lot. These 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 <laughs> this year of crash out. Wh- while it's these things are entertaining when you're away from them, but the secondhand embarrassment also be hitting me hard. Because again, I know people who work directly with them. I heard how tough of a week my friend had with all this craziness. Because it was building up before we we saw everything publicly. Yeah, we spoke about like, it. Yeah, it, it it fully erupted. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's just uh. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. And, um, you know, I I, th- I think for him, as much as he wants to think he can stay away from the Internet, it's just not going to happen. Like, he just has too much. Like, you have a podcast. You have to you have to promote your podcast. Like, you're an artist. He ain't want to do that you shit. You got to promote remember? your music. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting. <laughs> but, <laughs> yep. So, Yachty crashed. Uh, the boat The boat was uh, 
There's a <laughs> the boat. The boat, the boat uh, had concrete in it. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> or not enough concrete. Oh, I don't the know. boat. The boat ran into a rock. <laughs> on the... we'll, we'll get it. <laughs> we'll, yeah. Yeah. We'll it's get crazy. It. You used to have the sailing team mm-hmm. that crashed the boat into mm-hmm. some concrete. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We're working on it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. Mm. We're getting there. Mm. Uh, let's move on. So, Kaylani, just like a month after dropping her album. Oh, gosh. Announced while we wait to our mixtape will be out by the time you guys hear this. Uh, the 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 mixtape will be out while we wait to. Um, so my my initial thought when I saw her announce this, I was like, oh, you know, Crash wasn't it her album? Like you you know it? Yep. Because typically when when niggas follow up and they try to do a series that they did before that was popular, it's because they know whatever they drop wasn't yep. it. And she got me because I loved while we wait. In 2019, that was my shit. I, I love that mixtape. So she got me, especially with the single she dropped, a Lucky Day. Pretty good. She got me. But it's just, it's very interesting. And on top of like a bunch of different controversies she's going through right now. I'm sick like, of her. Like, g- g- I'm good. So I'm so sick of her. <sighs> so sick. It, well, go ahead and finish her. Go ahead. My bad. I'm it's sorry. a lot. No, and, and I mean, it's a, it's, it's a conflicting experience because it's like, for a while, I was sympathetic toward her. You know, the shit with YG. Just a bunch of different things that she was dealing with. And then, you know, sooner or later when things continue happening, you gotta you kinda gotta look at the person who is being presented as the the victim and be like, yo, is it you? <laughs> are, are are you the problem? Mm-hmm. And again, I, I I don't know her. I I don't know anything beyond what I see. But it's just when controversy continues to find find one person, you gotta eventually be like, yo, maybe you are the controversy. Um, so that's been exhausting. My, my nigga, they said she was in a cult. Like, <laughs> yeah. and her child's involved. Like, yeah, the, the baby daddy stuff, like, what, yeah. what he was saying and, like, the accounts and, like, kind of, it just, it looked yeah. too crazy and mm. it was, like, lined up a little bit too much for me. And, yeah. And their relationship was weird from the beginning. It's right. just been a lot of weird things. Weird shit. Yeah. But I do remember, like, when she was first introduced to us, um, I forgot which show, which competition show, was it America's Got Talent? One of them, the one that Nick Cannon hosted. And um, I remember her just having, like, a real, like, rough upbringing. Mm-hmm. So not justifying, but more so explaining mm-hmm. that I know when people go through stuff like that, like, things that you can only imagine, like, homelessness yep. and in the foster care system, like, that shapes their personalities. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she just might need a deeper level of healing mm-hmm. and um, shadow work, but... I like Kaylani's music. Mm-hmm. I've I've always like I can't say that I'm a fan though, like like how I am with SZA and Summer Walker. Mm-hmm. I can't say that I'm a fan, but I like what she does. Yeah. I like the music. I see like what she be doing. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay. She has a lot of potential, but the drama yep. is just overshadowing a lot of these artists' Absolutely. Um, music Absolutely. and I, it sucks for them. No, I completely agree. Completely agree. So um, yeah, she dropped the single with uh, When He's Not Here, We're Lucky Day Today. I thought it was great. Pretty simple songwriting, uh, good hook, good production. They're a good collab. I really like their song, Can You Blame Me, from 2020. So really good chemistry there. I fucked with it. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to While We Wait, too, because While We Wait is my absolute favorite project she's ever made. Um, is While You Wait the one where she's, like, looking over the fence? No, that is... Uh, um, I thought it was. What the fuck Me is too. that album called? That, that, people love that. that, that like, people love that album cover. Yeah, it. that like was when it her first drop. People were like geeked up, like, "Oh, this looks amazing." That was her 2020 album called. It, it was good until it wasn't. Mm, okay. Yeah, it was good that until one. it wasn't. Okay, um, that's the one that had Tory Lanez on it, and then she took him off after. Oh, wow. and then wow. was posed the, with Chris Brown like two weeks ago. That too. That too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like when the women be taking like the me too stance i'll be like understand like i'm here for it mm-hmm. as a as a vagina owner yeah i'm here for it mm-hmm. you gotta stand on but it under- in all regards you gotta st- yeah. me too it all my nigga yeah me, me too, <laughs> me too it, it all, all. Yeah. yeah you open up a can of worms when you do that shit you gotta yeah. me too it all yeah mm-hmm. no it's uh it, it definitely is interesting where him too where people pick and choose <laughs> and you know it's it, it's it's unfortunately human nature a lot of people kind of yeah. stand on these morals and then yeah their morals be shaky in other arenas but you know and alas. i love when the r&b girls show up for chris brown yeah yeah i remember uh people were upset jordan sparks didn't go on stage with him to do no air but she was at the show she was like i, I was there i just couldn't get on, on stage with him i was like well 
I was there. That's dope. I hate That's dope. how they try to make it news of like all the R and B girls. So I like, love it. I be retweeting. <laughs> it I mean, every like time. yeah, it's like it's like, but yeah, he's he yeah, they he's are. Chris Brown. He's Chris they grew up with him. Yeah, bro. They yeah, are going that's, to see him. And, and, and I think that's something like, people fuck. people don't consider. Like, like it's similar to the Russell Simmonses and the Diddies and all these people, like or even with wrestling, like Vince McMahon. Like people will ask John Cena how he feels about Vince. It's like Vince gave me my career. Like I like I got I've been rich for the last 20 years because of him. Thanks to him. Like, I love him. That's my friend. What he did was fucked up. But, like, we still have a relationship. Um, and that doesn't make it, like, okay to, like, excuse what they're doing, but no. it's hard for these people to see the person who did so much for them as anything other than the person that they knew them as. It's, it's the classic... It's the classic statement that a lot of people on the internet and a lot of people, just, like, fans, just need to, like, understand, like, you don't know these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you do not know these people. These people are going to support these people or their friend or artist. Whatever they know them. Yeah, probably had like like real been, relationships. Like real relationships yeah. know them. Like <laughs> they probably like yeah. Well, he does sometimes fucked up, but with yeah. me and him, with our relationship, I'm here to support him. Yeah, He's my friend. And like, and even if they're not friends, some people just view them as entertainers. Like, that too. Chris Brown Talented is a good show. You might just want to go see a good show again. I understand Facts. that people see it as wrong, but also. The standards you hold, you can't impose on other people. Correct. Like everyone else operates in different ways and has different tolerances for fucked up things. And again, I'm not justifying anything. I'm just saying this is how people are. Like mm -hmm. they're like it, you know, and we, we've had the talk before, so we don't even got to get deep into it. But we, we just know like we all interact with people who see things different ways. I remember speaking with different journalists in in in, in the community who are like, yo, like. I really want to like review this Tory Lanez album, but like we want to get Meg for this thing. So I can't talk about him on this. Like, you know, yeah. like just, just stuff like that. Like people, people ultimately pick and choose, but people support who they want to support. The duality of life is one of the most amazing things like, yeah. ever created. It's, it's, it's so like, important to it's, it's, embrace. It's nuts. Yeah. It's like, but it was makes this shit special. Mm -hmm. And hard at the same time. And hard. Yeah. And hard. Absolutely. Makes it life. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. God, you went crazy with the duality shit, my boy. <laughs> I don't know what you was. I don't know what you was thinking, but you was you was cooking some shit up, my boy. Yeah. Yeah. Can't lie to you. We can do this. We can do that. And we yeah. can. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a, yeah. it's a constant balancing act of thinking about yourself and what you enjoy and you want to stand for, but also your perception. And some people get just crippled by thinking of their of how they're perceived by other people that they either hold themselves back from things or stand on things they don't actually believe in. And that's kind of where I'm at in life. Like I just, I just stand on what I, what I really believe in rather than standing on what will make me look good to other people. Mm -hmm. Because the people who will judge you for shit got their own skeletons in the closet, got their own shaky morals too. So like, who, who are you to be judge and jury when, like, you could be on the stand tomorrow? You know what I'm saying? And not, like, for, like, actual crimes, but just, like, just in, anything, in, you know, in general, for anything beliefs. Life, just yeah, anything. for things that you might have done that people don't know about, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, very, <laughs> very... Um, people right. love to make fun or poke at stuff that they think, oh, will never happen to me. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up, like you said, oh, yeah, I, it, I, it happens to them. That, be like, yeah. what the fuck? That couldn't be me quote is something that, like, I used to say it a lot when I was younger. And then, like, I really sat and thought about it one day. I was like, yo, one day it really could be me. It Some could, things could, be could really never be me, though. That's right. That's right. Gangsta. Some things could really Gangsta. never be me. Like, Gangsta. I remember my homegirl venting Gangsta. about how she bought, a, like, you know, rented an apartment for a dude she was uh -oh. dating and was, like, had so much money owed. Like, he owed her so much bread. And I was just on some, like, I know you never supposed to say never, mm -hmm. but that could never be me because I would never even do all that shit. Yeah, so like, that's why I could say it could never be me. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? But in, in segueing. That case, that's valid. You feel me? But certain <laughs> things is like just out of my character. I won't be in that situation because you're dumb. Yeah. But like just segueing back to Kaylani, mm -hmm. um, I do think a lot of the her recent acts have just been real gimmicky. Mm -hmm. I do think she like, and it's not just her. All artists are struggling to sell mm -hmm. and to like you know move the units and stuff. But yeah. like even the free Palestine thing, it came mad late. Like right when she was promoting her album. Um, even well, her, well, one thing I'll say for the last couple of years, she's been she, 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 she's been pretty vocal about that about politics. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I ain't keeping up. So thank mm -hmm. you for you yeah. know fact checking on that. But mm -hmm. it just felt like the time and when she said it online, mm -hmm. it just felt like I didn't see her say it any time before that. And it it definitely has been more. 
strategic? Not not strategic. She's been doing it more lately. Okay. But it's also become a bigger conversation lately. Right. Like, there are some people I follow on Instagram. Their Instagram story every day is like 10 slides of Palestine stuff. Yeah. Which and it, just, it's, it's a little overwhelming sometimes. Like, I get I I, I completely support y'all, but it's like, it, it's a lot. But so, I did like, like when she did hop on the Kehlani remix. <laughs> Yeah, that was dope. That was, that was for dope. the culture. She oh, ate that. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. I'm not laughing at Pilesa. I'm just laughing yeah, yeah, yeah. at Armand because it's just like... He ain't laughed. It'd be no. like that, though. Bro, it's, like, it's, it, it's like, you'd be like, oh, my god. And it's like, I... I I'm so desensitized to, like, I absolutely shit, love it like, for them. I love seeing people be vocal about it. But it, it, it just is like... You know, it's like it's like you you wake up, you check your you check IG, you just expect to see something funny, expect to see a fire selfie, expect to a see new song. like yeah, like a little stupid game, and then like you get to ten straight. I'm like, damn, god damn, like, and I don't want to skip through it. I, I want to read it to be informed. But then you, you, you're sitting <laughs> oh there for like god. ten minutes. My I'm nigga like, said I was waking up. I was waking up trying to see some goddamn cartoons. Bro, I'm, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm over not here. no kids. Not no. Not no, not no. Oh my god. No, it, it I'm was, seeing it was buildings deep. blow yeah. up and niggas look like fucking. It was heavy Godzilla the came through. No, absolutely, and I, and, and, and I love it. Like again, this is not like me complaining. It's just like a it's culture shock. Almost. Yes, it's just like something that I wasn't used to, and I'm getting accustomed to it. So, right, that's all. But yeah, like I, I definitely will agree. Her her dis- discourse on it has grown over time, and I can see why people would see it as gimmicky because it's been a lot more pronounced lately. Right, um, but she's always stood by certain that. certain beliefs and morals the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, all that to say, I am looking forward to while we wait too. I, 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 again, I couldn't help but notice it came so soon after the album that nobody's talking about anymore. Like she had after hours cooking this year, which was, you know, dope. Great for her, but no one's, no one cares. (laughs) And yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, speaking of more new music, hundred gigs on your head top. (laughs) <laughs> Three more songs from the boy Drizzy. He dropped them on his burner IG and he dropped them on the 100 Gigs website. Plus some more new footage. A lot of like nothing was the same studio sessions, clips from the Would Fire. You Like a Tour when Miguel was back what? there. With, um, I went there. Yeah, yeah I, I remember you said that. Yeah. Future opened up for him too. Future and Miguel. Yep, yep, yep. And there was ah. video of him back there with The weekend and DJ mm-hmm. Drama was back there. <laughs> I saw and, video. Yeah, it was, it was funny because like Drake goes around, daps everyone up, and is just standing by weekend, like just chilling. I, was, I don't know. It was, it was noticeable. They, they could have dapped before the video, but it's like, hey, No, they didn't. It's just very noticeable. Like, he went around, dapped everyone. Yep. Weekend was just there. I'm like, hmm. We're music um, siblings because, like, I be barbing out the mm. way he be draking out. And that was so Nicky coded, that video that he did. Because mm. you know he only did that shit because the weekend didn't sign mm. to OVO. Yeah. I, that, <laughs> that, that's that's the, fu- the specific footage he dropped. Like, he dropped video... Of him working on the Who Do You Love verse for YG and Mustard. He dropped shit about Kanye. <laughs> Very specific. He dropped footage of of, of um, Migo stuff. Him recording Versace. Recording trophies. Um, Petty King. Yeah, yeah. It was like very, very, very strategic. And mm-hmm. So we got the three new songs. Um, S.O.D. without Lil Yachty, which I was very happy to see. Because I, I like Lil Yachty on the original version. We got Circadian Rhythm, which he's calling The Language 2. And we got No Face, which features ad libs from Playboy Cardi. That was serious. I'm sure you guys can guess how I feel about all these records. Love it. I don't, I don't know about love. I, <laughs> I, 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 I fuck with S.O.D. I really like Circadian Rhythm. I think No Face is like the best one. And that's the one that a lot of people have been gravitating towards. And coincidentally, it's the one where he's being the most... He definitely recorded that post. Like, oh, that's, it, that, that's, that's very new. recent. That's, that's very new. recent. Like, that's new. There's a, there's a lot of bars in that. There's a lot of, a lot of shit in that He's Talking about how you like, getting lit off the nigga you hating on, mm-hmm. all these features I skated on. Mm-hmm. Um, Cardi come through with his crazy ass shit. Yeah, yeah. What? On, on like, I think <laughs> Circadian, he's talking about all these niggas playing funerals for me and I just passed skated by him, all this shit. Like, he's very much so, he's, he's doing the Drake thing. Like, after he beat Meek, he was dissing Meek for like, you know, a little while after that. Summer 16. Uh, stuff on views, stuff on more life. After he lost a push, he got at push on life is good. Got at um fucking uh yay and push on laugh now cry later. Now with this, he's like you know he he took the he took the L, and so he's still he still got shit to say. Um, the biggest thing of the weekend is on his burner IG, he dropped a video of Rashid Wallace from the 2004 Eastern Conference Finals, saying that they were gonna win Game Two. He was a member of the Pistons at the time. And they were playing the Pacers. And he said, we're going to win game two. 
And everyone is interpreting that as Drake saying he's trying to reignite the beef and he's going to win this time, which sparked a whole discourse about it's not game two. The series is over. Like, why, well, why would you want to reignite this? Like, girl, you lost, blah, 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 all that, all that. And Did I'm you just say like, girl, you lost? Huh? Did you say girl, you lost? Did that say that? I, I, no, I think you did. Yo, Fruitian. I was like, I was like, yo, this, yo, you sassy did, little motherfucker. Did, did, <laughs> girl, you, you lost. He said, girl, you Bye. lost. I'm not going cap. Yo, everybody, yo, niggas caught that. Yo. I did not. Tr- I did not intend to say yo, that. <laughs> that was. I've been sassy, spending too nigga. much time on Miss Two Bs. That was sassy. That was me, right said, girl, there. Girl, you lost. That's crazy. I I promise I did not mean to say that. <laughs> my nigga. What? <laughs> I promise I did not mean to say that. I caught it like I was like That's I'm sorry. I, I, I wasn't gonna say nothing. Oh, so my. I, I, I could not. I couldn't go. I couldn't but, go. But Poppy took a bad lashing. Yeah. He took a bad lashing. Said, girl. Yeah. yeah. Girl, you lost. That's crazy. That's really crazy. No, you got to put that on a t-shirt. Girl, you lost. I, I I need. I don't know what I need to do to like get the real nigga back within me. But um, and not. But, it's not on me. You've been booed no, up too, gangster. I, I have not done anything like that. Right. I'm a wholesome, chaste king. Um, <laughs> but uh, a wholesome, yeah, chaste. So, Chased, yeah. It's a, it's 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 a it's like a I don't know if it's biblical or it's just like uh well I like an older term for uh, abstaining. Mm. I mm. told He's you his book bo- yo He's going crazy. lunch break, we need to rotate Armand's word of the week. Real I got talk. you. I got you. That nigga just I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> yeah, that was right. <laughs> but um yeah, so that's really been the whole conversation is like round two. Why do we need it? The battle was fun on its own, we don't need it. But then it's like the other side of it, which I, I wasn't necessarily pushing this, but I saw other people say it. It's like, it's rap. Like, Drake is doing rap type stuff. Correct. Like, giving niggas music not officially, like, through the website, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, like we talked about off camera, it seems like it's a rollout for these for these new songs to eventually go on streaming. Um, so I'm personally not mad at it. Some other theories people actually brought up, too, was, like, people are trying to figure out the why of it all. It's like... The footage, okay, cool. You give that to us on the website. Why are the songs being given in this way? Like, the numbers guy is intentionally hindering how many numbers he can get by giving people the songs already and then putting them on streaming, like, later than, like, it, like if these were the typical Midnight Friday release among everything, it's possible that they would have charted better. Because, like, last week we saw It's Up went, like, 28 Blue, green, red went like 50 something. Housekeeping knows went like 80 something, which is noticeably low for, for Drake. Like you would expect top 10 debuts, but they were added to streaming like on a Saturday. And people are like, yo, like, is he in a, in a negotiation battle with UMG? Is, is, is he doing this to expose that Spotify be botting? Like, and honestly, like, I'm not mad at these theories. Usually I'm, I'm pretty annoyed with these theories, but I'm personally not mad at these mm-hmm. because. If you look at his Instagram, each song got like 4.5 million plays on the Instagram page. And previously with the other songs, they did pretty well on his Instagram page too. So then if you look at the streams for them, like they were noticeably low on certain songs. And it's like, yes, people have them already, but people want the convenience of streaming them on the app that they listen to their music all the time. So it's just, it's a noticeable disparity. So like, what do you guys think about some of those theories? Um, I, I think... Like, sometimes stands would be seemingly reaching, (laughs) but I do think they're on the money with certain things because Mm -hmm. Drake is just too, like, he knows better. And he has been vocal about, like, the powers behind the machine that aren't fair to artists and stuff like that. Like, remember when his mic got muted during his um, acceptance speech Mm -hmm. at the Grammys? So... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's trying to prove a point, but like just based on like recent events, it wouldn't be too far fetched. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was. I still have questions. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. I don't have like any more answers. It's just more questions yeah. because, you know, everyone is also wondering what type of deal he has. Mm-hmm. Why is he touring so often? Why is he releasing he, he so also frequently? Wasn't touring often. Like this recent tour was his first tour since 2018. So that's a weird narrative that he's, well, he's I saw a slave him three to times work to the road. in the past year and a half. Yeah, but it, it was all the same tour. Well, no, it was Apollo. Apollo wasn't a t- that was just some like t- two day stop type thing. And then he had the um, it's all a blur from March to like 
It was like, he was damn near on the road for a year. I think he only took like a month break. But um, but why? I mean, he he had to cancel a bunch of shows, and then him and Cole wanted to do some like. And then they went on tour yeah, together. Yeah, like well, they they capitalized off the moment of first person shooter, and and I think it was just cool for them to go on the road together, and they hit some cities. Some smaller cities that they would have never normally hit. So, yeah. like, I, I thought that was a cool look. By all means, it, it could have been to recoup because that's where the artists, as we know, so they really make their money is touring. So, by all means, it could have been. Well, they really make their money if they own their shit. But well, yeah, that too, that too, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, the the whole touring narrative was always weird to me because it's. It, but prior to that, it was like a six year gap from his uh, Aubrey and Three Migos tour. So weird, but it's um, true. Yeah, but I don't know. He's just been so like extra visible these days what you think well yeah i think honestly bro i think he's just emptying the hard drive mm-hmm. i think and i think he i think i think i don't think i know that he knows that he can do whatever the fuck he wants right he can and yeah, <laughs> yeah these are, are, are those songs are to me those are just throwaways that he was wanting to put out mm-hmm. and it's like yeah they have that many views because it's drake yeah like it, it and it's 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 it's, it's, it's good music i mean it, it to me, the music's cool, but I like to see the archive shit. Like, right. I love that type of shit. Like, especially from big artists that you know that we've seen over the past decade plus, and like seeing some of these things. And like, like the one video when he's rehearsing with the Migos and he's doing like their ad libs. Yeah, that yeah. shit was funny as fuck. I'm yeah. like, okay, like yeah. Or like when him and Cole went to Best Buy or whatever and was buying the CDs are literally falling. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, you see fans coming up and, like, dapping them up. And, like, yeah. they were, like, that accessible back then. Like, yeah. that shit's, like, tight to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say, and I might get in trouble for this, my nigga, the work he, the work he got on his face, on his, like, body is crazy, bro. Like, the way he looks back then <laughs> to now is nuts. <laughs> It's nuts, y'all. No, I'm trying to tell y'all. Think I'm like, bro, BDL, see, bro. I'm. It's the thing BBL. is, it wasn't. It wasn't the ass. It was like the face, like, the- like, like, like. like <laughs> the BBL shit is just like it's like a, it's like it's trying to throw you off. But like, bro, look at his face. Like, look how he used to like look. What and, Rick like, Ross said? You got rid of your daddy nose, nigga. <laughs> See, Rick, really see Rick, daddy knows. Rick Ross really went in. He was like, <laughs> he really went in on, on like the the features for real. But like, bro, you just look at us, just like, damn, like. And I seen this one tweet. It's like. I seen this one tweet. It's like something happened to this man in 2015, 2016 because this man, all the happy go lucky shit is gone. Like, it is. But nigga said that's that's the year he got punched in the face by Diddy at the club. Yeah, is I it? Mean, a, a lot happened that like, yeah, that year was then. nuts for him, I guess. Because he literally stopped like he, he, pandering he, to black women, like he, just out he was of bubbly. nowhere. He was, like, he was different. It was just like it was. He like was a, a sweetheart, Drake. Mm-hmm. Like, and then like now he's an insult. Yeah, he was like, damn, he definitely was like the the boy next door, yeah, like rapper, like so cool, sweet. like oh, he's from Toronto. Yeah, he's yeah. like, like he was acting on Garage, like he was like cool, but also he can rap his ass off, but he's also charming. Like it yeah. was like very like girls. And love then them. something happened, bro. In like 2015, 2016, it, that I, nigga turned into like looking for revenge. Yeah, I think I, mm. I think I think 2015 was the start for part of his villain arc, but then. In 2018, he gave us Nice For What with the music video that had Issa Rae, Tracy Ellis Ross, all them in it. Like, that was a that was a very... But it seemed more pandering. Drake isn't that obvious with it. Like, he just knows how to... He knows how to appeal to us without doing that. Like, you gotta be nice for what to these... Like, Drake has never been, like, that blatant with it. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think anything prior to that. That, that was probably the most, like... Yeah, the... it seemed gimmicky. Like, Drake, like... I mean, I liked it. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, and the sample, but like, I don't know. It just seems off, and something did happen. I don't know. <laughs> I Bring just him swear. back. I think it's that. I I think it was the year that he got punched in the face by Diddy in the club. Bro. That'll do it to you. I'm not gonna lie, because I remember when I used to get bullied and like you know just be seen as like you know I'm just not gonna react or do nothing, and then you just finally start reacting and you can't stop. Mm-hmm. Especially in the <laughs> club, like in front of everybody. Hell like, yeah! And you a man? Yeah. You a grown ass man? No. That's nuts. I think it was Don't in my hair too, or something. In shit. front of other people. No, especially not in front of one of my hoes. You yeah. wilding? Like, yeah. nah. Yeah, I remember seeing that video when he's running back in the club and people trying to stop him, like. Drake, like he's like he's like nah, pissed. I remember, though. bro. Oh my god, I gotta send it to y'all. It's crazy. Yeah. It looks yeah. Cool, it looks nuts. but um <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think when it comes down to it, I I definitely agree. I think he's just emptying the hard drive. Like 
like I saw people on Twitter being like, yo, these aren't the ones and none of these are going to go number one. It's like, I don't, one, I don't think that's the intention. Right. But two, it's also like, there have been songs in his past that I didn't expect to go number one either. Like personally, I didn't see it for 2C slot. That, shit that went seemed, number one? Yeah, it went number one. What? It was, it was a pandemic. It was, Damn. you know, TikTok joint because it, it, it debuted like, like it didn't debut no, uh, number one the week it came out. It was like the week after that because it caught a lot of steam on TikTok. Um, that I, I didn't expect Jimmy Cooks with 21 on honestly never mind to go number one. Um, there's been a couple number ones in his career that I didn't I didn't expect, but um, but yeah, I don't I don't think that, I don't think that's the intention because these would get a traditional release anyways. Like, and the, that's the thing I'm I'm noticing and a lot of people aren't noticing is like these aren't even going to SoundCloud. Yeah, bro. These are on literally on IG and, and the website. That's Word. weird. That is like, weird. He does he doesn't do that. Even his Lucy's his diss tracks. His Lucy's before they go to Spotify or whatever, they would go on SoundCloud first. He's or making at least them OVO Sound Radio. Yeah, like my nigga, I don't want to listen to a song on IG, so I I find someone to rip them. I put them on this other app on my phone so I can listen to them conveniently. Like, and there's been word that you might have a deal with Instagram or something. And like, I I I I, I, I saw someone saying that they think this is gonna be a catalyst for other artists to start putting stuff on Instagram too. Cardi, Kendrick Car- did it Cardi, first. Yeah, Cardi was doing it too this year yeah, too. Yeah, there's, the, 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 there's been a lot of them who have like, wait, like put full songs or, or just preview stuff? No, like the full, that's what he was doing. Like when that little run that Cardi had, like when he was dropping like Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That was right, just like right. straight, like yeah. It was you're just right, yeah, it's 2024, there. all those joints, that, you're right. It was like I, IG and, um, and, and YouTube. And YouTube, yeah. That was it. But like these aren't even going to YouTube. Yeah. Like the, these I mean, are, these are just staying on IG and the right. website, which is just That's it's very untraditional. It's interesting. I think he's. I think he's just. I think he like. I think he's in, emptying the hard drive, and I think he's just letting the letting the world do whatever the fuck they want to do with it. Yeah. Like yeah. y'all want to download this shit. Y'all want to upload this. Like, oh wait, I do have a question though. Like, are people that uploading it are they getting flagged and like is it getting taken down? Because uh, if shit's not getting taken not down. Yet. Uh, upload it to what? Just like anything. Like, there are people like, like, uh, like, yeah, are people like just ripping the songs and uploading? Like, you go search those songs on YouTube right now and find them uploaded by different people? I'm pretty sure there's a page that you will upload can. it, but yeah. until it's like on DSP, UMG isn't probably not going to flag yeah, the claim what, yet. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to, like, yeah, that's, that's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's just not getting flagged or claimed. Yep. There's this page, Rap Nation. If, if, if you ever yeah. want something that's just an IG exclusive or something, Rap Nation usually has it. But these will probably be taken down. Yeah, I mean, time. yeah, yeah. But whenever they get uploaded, yeah, they're yeah. about to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's usually when the copyright strikes come. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like I, I, you know, I, I don't play the the theor- the theory game too much, but I did see a couple of theories. I was like, that's mm-hmm. actually kind of astute. That's actually interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out on that one. So, that's that. We'll see what Drake does next. Um, let's jump into some new albums from this weekend. Stay busy is going pop, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Sabrina Carpenter, short and sweet. <sighs> Such a good album. Such a good <laughs> album. I, I really got familiar with her like within the last few months. Her song, Espresso, was going crazy on the charts. Um, my, like, my, my wrestling Discord, we have like a channel where we talk about music stuff, too. And a bunch of them were talking about her. So I was like, all right, like, if I see a name going around, I'll, 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 I'll look it up looked it up played it i liked it like i i don't know if y'all know this about me but like i have a pretty expansive music taste like i, I like alternative stuff i like pop stuff I, I like i like pretty much all type of music so i, I was rocking so i pr- played espresso she had please 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 that was going crazy i saw she dropped an album i was like all right i'm gonna tap in and some good pop music yo this shit good what's the top three this shit good. what's armand's top um, three my top three for short and sweet would be good good graces that was the one i posted on my story with offset dancing <laughs> <laughs> um, she got um this song called lie to girls and, and i love it like the the lyrics are real men don't lie to girls because if she likes you she'll just lie to herself about you i'm like damn that's a bar that's very true <laughs> like you you may not be shit but, but if she like you enough she gonna lie to herself yep about you you actually being shit rather than not being shit <laughs> um and then uh she got the song don't smile it's uh don't 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 don't, don't smile don't cry because it's over smile because so, i forget exactly what she says beautiful though like it's this pop there's like little country elements to it there's like on one song it almost sounded like she used a little hip-hop drums but um good singer um very varied types of sounds like 
the upbeat stuff you'll hear in H and M, and then stuff you kind of get into your bag, and, and some really introspective type stuff, some more like folksy chanty stuff. Like it was, just, it was really good. Like Pop is up this year. I'm gonna tap in. Pop is cooking. Tap in. Tap in. I, 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 I would, I, I was especially interested in in your review of this because you said you don't engage with white things. So I was like, Yo, don't worry, I'll be back me, with a review. Me, me making Miss Two Bs listen to this, she might, she might <laughs> cut me when she comes to the studio. No, I also worked in retail, so I think okay, that so comes from trauma with I, me saying that. I understand. That. Yeah, Honestly. like now that you say I'm, just, and then when you said H and M, I'm like, you know what? Because mm-hmm. I fuck with it too. We're black millennials, yeah. like of yeah. course like you we, have. A, we grew up on the the instincts, exactly. The, the, the LFOs, the Britney Kelly Spears, Clarkson's, Britney. So of course yeah. we like stuff like yeah. this. That's mm-hmm. no surprise. Yeah. But like, yeah, no retail dramatized me. But there was definitely a period <laughs> where, like, when I got old enough, I wasn't really rocking with pop, and Same. then in like recent years, I've kind of gotten gone back, back into it, like. Typically, I was just familiar with the mainstream stuff. Like, I, I worked at the gym in college, so I would hear the pop and pop songs, um, and they would get annoying. I would hear them all the time, so they would get annoying. But now it's like I actually go out of my way and, like, listen to this. Like, yeah. Listening to Charlie XCX, listening to Billie Eilish. Like, I'm like, yo, these, these girls, they're doing anything. They cooking? These, these they cooking with gas? Yeah. I can't lie to you. <laughs> me too, because, like, what's that song with the baby and do? Do a leap go? Oh, um, that got me back into pop, like yeah. levitating. I was like, oh levitating. shit! Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm like, yes. this is a hit, it's a good hit, record. Nigga. That was, yeah, that was a good. I was record. like, yo, shout out to Dua whoa, Lipa. Dua Lipa's out here whoa. too. Like, yo, the the and and this is really what I wanted to talk about. Like, a really good album. Uh, four, 14, 12 songs, thirty six minutes. So really easy listen. Okay, and she's a Disney kid. Bad. She's a Disney. A Di- she is a, a Disney, Disney kid. kid. Oh, so I'm she's, sold. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. You should have you should have led with that. My bad. My bad. But yeah, it was like I wasn't hip. So like after hearing the album and hearing how good it was, I had to do my research because um cam our boy cam put out a tweet um because she's projected to sell 280 to 310k mm. which is like we're not seeing numbers like this unless Anymore. it's pop and country mm-hmm. and it's like years ago hip-hop would be doing not these exact numbers but like close, close. like Lil uzi was selling in like the 300s and you know um i, I don't want to say little baby but, but, but little baby was selling the 100ks and you know just like more sales were higher more, more rappers were selling more and it's like <laughs> lately they're not but these pop people you got morgan whalen you got post malone who's now fully country you got sabrina carpenter you got charlie xcx you got billy eilish you got dua lipa you Even got like the teddy swims dude yeah like, like, taylor yeah. swift like like all all these it's like Hip hop was dominating for a while, but pop is really taken back over, and it's it's a noticeable shift back to them. And so it's it's really interesting times. And it's like you know we talk a lot about the talent not being there, but this is an infrastructure thing too. Correct. Like, like hip hop isn't dominating because it is being constructed that way. Like it, it's it's manufactured that way. They're not pushing hip hop acts the way that they used to. And it's a really interesting shift. And I'm trying to think back to like when it really began. I mean, Morgan Whalen's been doing his thing for a couple of years now. Taylor Swift has been a juggernaut since we were young. Like literally. Uh Billy Eilish is a more recent act. Dua Lipa's been around for a couple of years. Sabrina Carpenter has actually been this is her sixth studio album. Which is nuts. So she she's been making music for a minute, but she's she's 25, so she's still a young star. But it's like we have this influx of these young pop stars, and they're churning them out. Like, uh, cause there's also Olivia Rodrigo. There's there, you know, there's all, all these, all, He's mad at them. All, all these other joints, like, and a couple of them are Disney kids. Shout out to Disney, you know, holding it down, turning out the talent, but it's like, all right, nice. But pop has always been big. Like there was a time where hip hop overtook it, but pop has always been big. But the decline of hip hop is very, no- and I remember last year when it took like, six months for us to get a, a number one hip hop album. Lil Uzi Vert was the first one. And that album wasn't even hip hop to me. That was Same. all over the place. And it was a conversation and everyone's like, it's not a big deal. Like, so what these albums aren't going number one. Like I'm just like, yeah, but it, it is noticeable because hip hop was typically dom- dominating the charts, like <laughs> dominating the charts. And now we see like beyond not getting number ones, niggas are struggling to sell 40 K records in their first week. Yeah. And first week sales don't determine everything. You know, the longevity is fine. We saw like Ice Spice started at like 20 something and then she sold 100K by the week following. So it's like first week doesn't determine everything. But it's again, it's a noticeable decline in people whose names like you see their names, you see everything that that gets put into them. And you're like, this person should like make a big splash. So yeah, it's it's a it's a very noticeable difference in energy and investment. 
And it's just like, I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the labels are going to put the most into what they're going to get the most from who's going to help them to recoup the most. I'm just like, damn, when did they lose the confidence in hip hop? When did they kind of pull back from hip hop? Cause we talked about it last week. Like the only people who are really selling well are the artists who have been established for years. And it's like, yeah, yeah if you're someone like a Drake or a future or a Nikki who has crazy back catalog to where you could put out an, an album, even if it's not the best album, just you being visible. If they hear a new joint that they don't like, they're like, I don't like this. I'm going to go back to your 2013 album. These labels are still making money off that because, because they own your back catalog. They, they own your legacy recording. So it's like them promoting those acts benefits them regardless, but a new act who they don't, they don't know like if you have it yet. So they put mad money into you. They put an album out. They pay for the big feature and then you sell 30 K. So, like, Hey, you're going to the shelf. Like <laughs> you, you go to the shelf, but, but this Sabrina girl, yeah, we, we putting millions into her. Um, cause like her whole rollout has been just like super active, uh, similar to cash. We're going to talk about later. She got the Apple music interview. She was on hot ones. Like they, they had her in all the spots that people are watching and it's, it's, it's playing into the music and her videos are also really good. Like I, I'm, I'm like quickly becoming a real fan of Sabrina Carpenter. I'm, I'm not going to front. Like, I, I don't know what her hive is called. Like, uh, 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 the carpet munchers, carpet muncher is crazy. <laughs> carpet muncher is kind of crazy. We're, 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 we're going to have to work on that, but, but like, it's, it's, it's a real case study because they took the time to develop her again. This is her sixth studio album. And this splash that she's made now with like espresso going crazy. And yeah, it's just, it's these are things like, and Cam said it, like you really got to pay attention to these things. And I think, you know, we're the culture. We don't care about numbers. We just love how music makes us feel. And that's fine. I'm, I'm not a numbers guy either, but the disparity between now and a couple of years ago, it is a very noticeable thing. And I think people shouldn't miss it because like, You'll blink and uh, I, 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 I can't even like come up with what mm-hmm. like, you know, it, it's going to be in a couple of years. It's going it to just... be how it was before when like the retail stores used to be like, don't play that hip hop mm-hmm. song. And yeah. you were only allowed to play pop. But I do want to piggyback on you saying like they took the time out to develop Sabrina mm-hmm. because that I do think that that is a huge part that's missing. Like, yeah the rappers aren't getting that time to be developed. I remember doing content for work and watching Nelly on the shop saying, like, we weren't even allowed to drop our debut albums mm-hmm. without development at first. Yeah. And um, it just seems like whoever are the powers that be or, like, the people behind the machine, it just seems like they just want the rappers to figure it out themselves mm-hmm. or just co- kind of come, like, somewhat developed. Yeah. That's and exactly then, what it is. Yeah. They expect you to be ready right when you get there. And so like, don't get me everything. wrong, black people are so excellent that well, I can, can see it. why yeah. that, that is an expectation. But we've been very self sufficient as well. Like we like Correct. we had to make our own labels because we weren't getting you Family? know signed a label. So I think the the independence and the like go getter attitudes yeah. is something that they expect everyone to have. Yeah. But also to bring that level of excellence to the table. And everyone can't bring that level of excellence. It needs to get brought out of them sometimes. Yeah. And I just think that that is like lacking. Cause like I tweeted, like I'm banking on Chloe Bailey and Dochi. Mm. Like those are just two artists that I don't want to throw in the towel for because mm-hmm. they're just super mega talented. Yeah. And I do think that they can move the needle with just right development and like the right team and the right production. Mm-hmm. But like who is going to be the one to put that behind them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I saw, um, I saw you kind of engaging on the topic a little bit on, yeah. on Twitter. One, I think, I love Cam, I th- I, I, but I do think he's super hard on on, on up and coming rappers and up and coming just just rapping just general. I think a lot of people are. Also, I mean things are like you know it comes in cycles. Like you said, like uh, you know times before, it, maybe it cycles back to um, hip hop being or selling those numbers. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I really think when the pullback happened, or maybe like. I don't know, the shareholders, everybody was like, oh, okay, maybe you can chill. Bro, we have so many of our young stars either die or go to jail. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I swear to God, Pop Smoke would be so big right now, it's not even fucking funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we looking like people like X, and he was like, bro, he might not have been mine, but 
He was the huge, bro. Him. He was huge. He's, he's he had a, a song with Cartel. Like Juice yeah. World. <laughs> Juice World was selling rap. Like these niggas were big, bro. These yeah. niggas were like real big. And they were beating out people uh, like, you know, when we was talking about those numbers and stuff. Like that was back in the day when, when they were alive. They were beating out big dogs, like crushing them niggas. And it was like, okay, we have this new thing. But like, you know, rap and rap is a lot harder and a lot different and set up different than these other these other um genres like pop and countries and stuff you know it's like we you're not going to i don't know how to explain it like you're not and i don't want to be that person of like oh black people have it harder we have it harder we have it set up different it's just, I mean, it's just it's just but it just it, it is bro like it just like for it comparison, just it is. they treat rap almost like fast food they and it's pop like it's you know, gourmet, gourmet. yeah, Michelin, yeah. yeah, and it's like you know, <sighs> which I get to a degree somewhat. Not that I agree with it, but I get it because mm-hmm. pop. These people are having songs written for them. Correct, you know, it's you, super made. Like bro. Taylor like, Swift isn't who she is without a Jack Antonoff. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, just like how Billy's not nothing without her brother. Like yeah. it's like very like it's super collaborative over there, and super we're trying to make the best product possible, and we're trying to do like you know. All that type of, like music theory type stuff, mm-hmm. rap, hip hop, and rap hip hop is a little bit more like let's just put it together, let's see what happens, blah blah blah. You yeah. also got to take care of my 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 fifteen cousins and my blah 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 back then. Yeah. Do this, I got to do that. You know, it's a, just a, it's a little bit it's a little bit different how we set up and just how we how we move. You know what I do think is gonna come back, but I don't know when. But there's gonna be a time where R and B comes back to the forefront. And it's gonna, it, but I, I, it's I, I, pushing through that. now. Yeah, people have been waiting. It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna, and maybe, and maybe, like, maybe that's, maybe that's the cycle now. Like, maybe the pop had like their little run. Um, what if R and B comes back? And is, Need and, that. And is, That'd be great. And is, and uh, I would love to see it. And yeah. I think you know that would, if that happens, I feel like that would surprise and blow people back. Like, like, oh my god, R and B's back. Like, it needs to happen simultaneously. Yeah. Like. I, I mean, I feel like it's yeah. It definitely should have. Yeah. It definitely should have. I mean, yeah. That's like. Those were some of the greatest times. Like yeah. In the 2000s when you had, you know, Ja, Ashanti, you know, 50. And Olivia. All yeah, Olivia. Like, also, like that. I feel like streaming adjusted too. Like, that's another thing. Like, you know how they took away bundles and stuff? And like, mm-hmm. it's just, I feel like streaming maybe like adjusted. And also, I just feel like, you know, rap. Yeah, it might not, you know, I might be selling like the, the, the most records and doing stuff like that. But I still feel like we are still the flag bearer of culture and of everything like that's like movement or like cool or whatever like Sabrina be making black jokes like mm-hmm. you know what I'm what saying what kind of black jokes uh <laughs> there was <laughs> I must say don't make me listen to this girl what there she was, be saying there was she's a moment funny. where she was on stage she's and funny. she said something about um she wants a BBC mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah so <laughs> Listen. Anyways, um, I need the full context. I ain't yeah, writing her off yet. Yeah. I'm like, I feel I you, to, sis. I, 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 have to, I have to find the video. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, I mean, I just think. I you feel know, you, sis. <laughs> feel me? I'm like, hold on. Let me hear her out. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not gonna hold you. I don't yeah. want to start wilding again, but that's what made me listen for real. I was like, okay. And so, oh, you want that? I got that. She, she tapped in. All right. <laughs> Big Sabrina, <laughs> you dig? Call me Big A. You dig? Anyway, go. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done. He said, I was, I, I was, I was pretty I much done. y'all take it over. I was pretty much done. Like, yeah, I mean, I pretty much said my still. Like, you know, I just think, yeah, we're black people. We're cool. We're rap. It's going to be, yeah. it's always going to be cool. You know, maybe we're not selling records right now. There's no, like, new stars. But, like, bro, that, like, it's not for us to decide. And they always, I mean, it is for us to decide. Like the fans, the people, it always is for us. But mm-hmm. and they all, but they always will poke their head. Yeah. Something will always like pop up or yeah. come up. Like I, 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 like I, I hate that type of stuff. Like even like when people do it with like the NBA, like now, like what the hell is gonna happen? Like when LeBron retires and like stuff, like is like basketball just gonna end? Like yeah, nigga, no. no. It like, seems like it. Yeah, I know no, people I mean, like. I, mean, I know like people. I don't like, watch it. I'm just like, what is gonna yeah, happen, but, like, you, I, bro? Like it, somebody will it's pop up. It's looking scary. Man. I mean, so it's, it's not that it's looking scary. It's just hard to imagine watching hoops and like. 10 o'clock coming up and a Laker game coming on and LeBron not playing. Like, that's, that's crazy. That's, that's, how, that's how niggas used to feel when Jordan, yeah. like, when, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, that's how niggas used to, feel, like, that's what happens, yeah. and bro. It's, it's, just, it's just a cycle. Of, it's just a cycle of, life. of like, yeah. life and, like, entertainment for real. Yeah, like, absolutely. The cycle of entertainment is nuts. But the thing about the machine is the machine always got more people coming. All it, the time. It's just, 
the emphasis now is back to pop and country. And pop and country were always thriving to a degree, but they're like at the forefront. Now. It, 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 it's just an adjustment because I think those years where hip hop was the number one genre, like it was cool saying that. It, it was, was really fun it was. to like it was fire. wave that flag, like and just feel it and see it. Like you see, all, like these white artists were scrambling. It was like, yo, I, I need to work with this person. I need, I need to do that. Like you see them tweeting about certain shit and whether it was genuine or whether it was, you know, to kind of catch some like piggyback clout off of it. It was like, they had to do it. They had to catch up to what we were doing. And that, that was cool. And now the system is, they caught up. They, they've caught up and then they, they, they've exceeded it. We haven't seen. And again, I'm, I'm not a big numbers guy, but the, you know, it's when I came into journalism, I was like, I'm I'm not numbers. I'm about the quality of the music and the storytelling. But as I kind of get deeper into stuff and as I pay more attention, like you, you have to be aware. There's of the a business numbers. side of this thing. Yeah, like don't don't let the shit consume you. Like don't decide if an album is good to you based off of how much it's sold. But these trends are worth paying attention to. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, besides the really big dogs, we don't see niggas selling even north of 100k and it's 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 noticeable it's noticeable so um yeah it's just it's interesting times really there's a lot of times. execs that don't know what they're doing too but mm -hmm. we ain't even yeah. gonna get into a big spiel about that yeah yeah i mean all all the the layoffs and the mergers and it's it, it almost feels like with rap they're just hoping to catch lightning in a bottle and with the other genres they're creating that correct lightning and sustaining that lightning and i get it but it's just like yeah damn <laughs> damn so all that to say, Sabrina Carpenter, short and sweet, really good project. Uh, make sure y'all tap in. And lastly, capping off Slizzy Summer. Hold on, let me right? play, gotcha. play, play Cash Cobain. Right. <laughs> we, <here. laughs> we here. So um, I got the project early. Shout out to shout out to the team for for blessing me. Um, but the world got it this past weekend. Nineteen track project. Features from Quavo, Don Tolliver, Four Bats, Payroll Giovanni, yes. Um, obviously the big problem track with Layla and Black and Big Sean and Fabulous and uh, Flo Millie and Cali and all these other people. <laughs> um, yeah, just, just a lot of them. Um, I don't think I missed any. Oh, obviously Bass Wag on Fisher. Fisher. Um, but yeah, so play Cash Cobain. How, how do we feel about the project? Um, that intro track was hard. I love that. The song. intro track was hard. I'm like, okay, because remember on the last show I said, it's not too many people that sounds good on the mm -hmm. Slizzy sound except for Cash, and then Don did his thing. Quavo smoked but it, it was Yeah, it was very refreshing to hear Quavo mm -hmm. smoke the track. Yeah. Um, I like the, like the sample flips, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it does get tiring for mm -hmm. me after a while. I can't listen to too much to too long, but... You know, I love anything coming out of my city, so I'm gonna be biased <laughs> as hell. Yeah, so, yeah. Your your uh, your uh, your your slizzy meter has its limits. It does. <laughs> it does. Like three songs tops, unless you about to go to the old shit, like Jay Holiday and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like, unless yeah. you about to go to the old shit, three songs tops. Yeah. So yeah, when I when I saw it was 19, I was like, and this is a general feeling I I have for all artists. Like it's, it's a lot. It's just a lot of songs. 19 song album, mm -hmm. 54 minute runtime. I was like, all right, this is it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and just the way that the sound goes. Like I've 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 been with my homies before and I've queued up stuff on Spotify, like stuff from Cash, stuff from Basewag, stuff from Chow, stuff from all that. And like we can listen for a good like 20, 30 minutes. But then after a while, it's like 20? All right, being right. nice. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I, I remember, I was, I, I was with my homegirl and my boy the other day. We were sitting in the crib sipping, and we, we queued up like thirty minutes worth of you know sexy drill songs, and like we were able to rock out. But I too have a a, a slizzy meter limit, <laughs> and so um, when I saw this, I was like, "All right, this is this is gonna be a ride." I played it through. The songs that I liked the most were the ones where Cash is doing something different. So like a track like Dunk, which flips Soldier Boy Donk. <laughs> I, I I just like that it's a different BPM. It's a different flow almost. It, it, it's a different type of vibe. And so those were the high points for me. Uh, Act Like I Love. I remember when he performed it on the On the Radar Experience. I was like, yo, whenever whatever song that is, I, I need that to come out. Because I love that. The the interpolation of Pop Smoke. Yeah, pop um, tribute for sure. Yeah, the pop tribute, the, the the sample leading into it. Like it was it was dope. It was really dope. Um 
love it. I love that. That's got like a kind of like <laughs> island bounce to it. Like it, it, again, it's just different. You know, I think Cash has mastered the the sexy drill, the that drum pattern, that BPM. And I, I saw people on Twitter like going at him about it. Like, yo, Cash, you make the same song, same song every time. And he was like, I mean, that's that's what sexy drill is. It, it, it's it's that drum pattern. It's that cadence. Kind of like with Jersey Club. Jersey Club is, but Jersey Club kind of has a little variation to it. But from from his perspective, I get it. Like that's his signature style, and it works for me as a fan who recognizes, like as big as this wave is, to, as as with all waves, they ultimately have a ceiling. And so with Cash, I want I obviously want to see him succeed. And so when I see him doing different stuff, I'm like, okay, great. This is what I like. So, uh, Dunk, love it. What's the other song that I really liked? Uh, Sizzy Huncho Dawn had more like a brooding kind of dark trap sexy drill element to it. So I, I love that. Um, so yeah, that, that was my feeling coming away. Like the high points for me were the, the different types of records where he shows his range and the other joints that kind of fall within his wheelhouse. They're cool. I, I didn't think they were bad, but you know, they just kind of didn't like move me as much. Like I, I've been listening to him for like, I'm, I'm, I'm admittedly late to, to, to the slizzy uh what do i want to call it S- uh, slizzy trains Sl- slizzy subway I'm, I'm 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 late to the slizzy subway i started listening in like 2022 so oh, late, late. yeah 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 so i've I, i've i caught up over time um but i i like it like so in in these two years i've i've grown to really like his sound his signature sound but an artist who i like and i think can reach even higher heights i like when i see them do different types of things and i think when he stepped out of the usual wheelhouse he, he really impressed me. And then on the other stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm not mad at it. Ultimately, you have to feed your, co- your core audience who has come to love that type of stuff. So I get it. I'm not mad at it. I think it probably could have been done in like a shorter track list and runtime. Correct. But um, overall, I completely get why people are, are saying play Cash Cobain. And this I had a big moment. Apple Music interview. Shout out to Will. Popped out. Pop, popped up in that, in that doc. You gotta see it. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 he's, he's getting like one of those pushes where it's yeah, like... It's happening. It's happening. Yeah, like niggas need to pay attention. It's so I, I love to see it, you know, as as someone who's interviewed him, who's met him, nice guy, really cool. Um, I love it for him. And so for me, it's just like, all right, my expectations and my standards, you know, are are going to continue to raise as you continue to sh- to prove people wrong. Because there there are people who thought Fisher wouldn't even make it through the summer, and it's still still got motion. So it's, it's like about to go yeah. gold. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, let's you know, let's let's see you continue it. Let's see you show that sexy drill isn't this thing that people are going to come to you and be like, Oh, you make the same song all the time. Like show us what else you got. So that's, that's what I have. But, um, yeah, I've, I've got some stuff on here. I really love. So yeah, that's my, my vibe. Yeah. Um, I will say just, you know, working with cash and working just, and you know, being around him, known him since damn near 2018, 2017. Like when I first kind of moved here, um, to see the elevation of the music and just like what he's doing, like that that shit is tight as fuck. Um, it's real tight. Um, but also like I will say, being a part of something like this big and just like growing. That's why like my message on IG, like when I said I was like, yo, I just never been a part of something like this big. Mm-hmm. How many moving parts? How many people? Like it takes to like really make some shit go and like really like get that push you're talking about and like being on top of things like. They're, like, talking about Grammy quotes and stuff like that. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, like, this is, like, really happening. Like, yeah. And it's, like, the level that, the level it takes in the the word with all. And, like, how many, like, you got to be on top of, like, everybody. Like, that's why, like, huh, that's why you get it, like, when niggas, like, go to the Grammys and shit. And, like, people be, like, winning awards and, like, naming all those people, like, and, like, crying and shit. Like, that shit is, like, real life. Yeah. Like, like, dead ass, like, real hard work. And, like, people really be doing everything they can the power to make something go make something go make a person really like go like make Mm -hmm. a a movement and and, because once you get to that level you're like you're not you're not just selling the music anymore you're selling everything like from from you know even like you know you're selling his family his background you're selling his future you're selling his friends you're selling like his his management you're selling you know everything so it's it it's crazy bro it's crazy um my favorite songs on there are like I love "Message to You." "Message to You" too is me. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's crazy. Just if because it it was it's nice to hear him a little bit more introspective and stuff. Yeah. And he was like, you know, he's talking about he's talking about her leaving him, but he don't want to leave. It's very it's a little bit more 
emotionally um, relatable. Right. Instead of just like, you know, the fucking stuff. Like, like everybody <laughs> like, fucking like, and eating pussy. Yeah, yeah, like everybody know how to like, bro, everybody know how to do that. Like niggas like, yeah, it's like, bro, like. We get it. Like we get like, yeah, bro, like yeah. We, we do like, we're human beings, niggas fuck. Like, and that, that plays into what I'm talking about, not mm-hmm. just the sound, but the content mm-hmm. too. Like, yeah. you know, I, I love that he is making drill in this fashion, you know, fuck the violence. Let's, let's all have fun and fuck. Let's but, fuck. But, <laughs> but, you know, like, like I said, p- people pigeonhole you and then a ceiling is put over your head. And how do you break through that? You yeah. start to do different shit. So, yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. I think, you know, it's good for this album, but, like, the next one should definitely have, like, you know, a different sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, de- yeah, he definitely, he definitely will because I just know kind of the next stuff he's working on. I will say it was surprising when I was checking those Apple Music charts that, like, Problem, the seven-minute song, was over Sabrina. Because mm. I feel like yeah, that song yeah. is, you know... That, that was people get the, tired of that. That was for the top 25 New York City, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. People that. get tired of that song. People turn that song off for, like, two minutes. Like, yeah. no one plays through the whole I song. I mean, I'm sure there are some loyal Slizzies and Slizettes yeah. who, are, <laughs> who are playing the entire song. No, it's and, crazy, like, bro. Doing like, the like, Reemski in their room for eight minutes. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I guess I, we just we just got it right before this. We just got it. said Spotify was a top 10 debut on the app, so... Mm. It was number 10. That's far. Sabrina was one, obviously. And then it was like, you know, some other stuff. And they were like, Little Tyler. I'm like, damn, Little Tyler had a... I guess people still listen to him a lot. Um, But yeah, it's it's doing it's doing good, bro. It's, 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 it's nice and it's like not surprising. But at the same time, it kind of is just mm-hmm. because it's like your imagination starts to go like, damn, like we can do this. Then yeah. you start like the next step starts to like form like, damn, we can do this. We might be able to do this. And it's like, I can only imagine being part of teams like Drake or like, shit like that that <laughs> yeah. really gets that big and like really like yeah. my nigga it's it, it's it's really science it's turnt bro yeah. I, bet it's, I bet it's yeah my nigga yeah, it's like nuts bro yeah it's nuts but nah it was cool seeing the doc like seeing him at, at his crib like the the support that that, that is that his family showed because I, I know i know a lot of people who don't get that type of support and it's yeah. one thing it's one thing to like get it and then it's another thing to be like yo look at the fruit of the labor that we i put in and that you invested into me like the story about his mom buying him the cheap mic and then him getting the more expensive one and um just all like the signatures on the ceiling and stuff like it's it's dope like those those are cool stories so that was really mm-hmm. cool so thought that was really well done by apple music and um yeah so play cash cobain is out for all of you you slizzards um <laughs> and, um yeah that is our chat for the week so let's get into our ad read before we jump into this board meeting this week have you heard about Fine Wine Series Festival. Well, this year they're back with their biggest festival to date. September 14th at City Field. Dive into a three-hour unlimited wine tasting. Listen to New York City's best DJs curating immaculate R&B vibes. And did we mention the dress theme? Liquid Fantasy. Save the date, book your flight, and step into a world where wine, music, fashion, and black excellence blend into an ultimate celebration. Get ready to make memories that will last a lifetime. You can get tickets to Fine Wine Series Festival at finewineseries.com. Again, that is September 14th at City Field, home of the disgusting New York Mets. Now, you're ready to get into our board meeting this week. I'm ready. Let me pull up my notes. All right. So, um, in honor of College Football 25 coming out recently, Madden is out now. NBA 2K will be coming out soon. One, one, uh, feature in all those games that niggas and women who play love is my player where you essentially create a player in your own imagination give them the attributes that they that you want put them on the team that you or they get drafted somewhere um you, you just have a lot of customization and flexibility in what you want to do and so we are going to do a stay busy version of my artist where we are going to create an artist from scratch and just decide all of their moves and take them through the career and evaluate, you know, how different things would go. So are y'all ready? Play Stay Busy, My Artist. I'm ready. All right. So very first question. Based on trends in the industry right now, what genre would you have your created artist make music in? So based on the current trends, I feel mm. like the most obvious is pop. Okay. But um, I would want my artists to kind of like blend genres because okay. I feel like that just represents me well. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love someone that can do like the 
Latin thing, the pop thing, mm-hmm. and like you know, whip out a couple little sixteen real mm-hmm. quick if if need be. So kind of like a kind of like a Cardi type mm-hmm. joint, okay? Yeah. I'm trying to think of other people who fall within that archetype, but like, Not Cardi. But, but, but but still it's like still speaking English or like would you yeah. want them Spanish? Spanglish. Okay, Spanish. Spanglish, okay. Yeah. yeah. So a Cardi. I think Cardi is the best example that you that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I was thinking just pop for mine, like, and then eventually they would cross over, do some hip hop stuff, but I would have them start out in pop personally. How about you, Will? What what genre? Um, uh, it was it was gonna be pop. Well, it was it wasn't really gonna be pop, but it's like that. I don't know. Do you did I ever send you? You ever listen to MKG? Did I send um, you that? I, I think you might have played a song mm-hmm. on the pod once, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, something I'm like that. That is is pop, but I want to blend genres though well, mm-hmm. as well. Because I just feel like that's what people listen to now. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's what most music is doing anyways. Um, but, yeah, like, pop, but blend into, like, an indie and kind of, but could still do, like, it's like pop R&B indie type shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. like, she can give you some deep cuts, mm-hmm. give you some pop up up level, you know, levitating type shit. Like, yeah. really, but, but also kind of give you something that's has the R&B size substance to it too as well. Almost like an Adele. Almost. Like, Nika? She, sounds like the perfect artist She makes me. stuff that almost Fuck. sounds R&B-ish but then mm-hmm. it's pop too. Right. Mm-hmm. She got the upbeat joints like mm-hmm. the the rumor has it, the yeah. fucking set fire to the reins mm-hmm. but then she also got the Turning tables, the, mm-hmm. the someone like you, chasing pavement. Chase pavement. Mm-hmm. I remember MTV played that every day. Yo, I was like, that someone like song... you is so crazy. Someone like you was a missile, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> was she yeah. right on her own shit too? Good I want to because when you start doing stuff like me, like making songs like that and stuff like mm-hmm. that, like you're like a godsend. Like, right. what is going on? Yeah. Like, you can sing it, you can write like that. Girl, yeah, to 2011, Adele was like 2013, Bron. She was. She was a monster, <laughs> She's a monster. But yeah, okay. So we got pop, indie, R&B type stuff, pop, okay, Latin, yeah. rap, hybrids. Yeah. And I was I was honestly going, Just because pop. I, 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 I want to build over time. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, when I was going through this, I thought about conversations we had, spe- specifically about Dochi and how, I think it was Will, you said it, like she gives, she kind of gives us so much that it's hard to put her in one lane. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I, I would want to build, build up over time to where like, you're not coming out the gate with a big rap feature immediately, but like when it when you when you do do it, it's a moment. Kind of like Ed Sheeran, where he started okay. out just doing his his type music for a little bit. <laughs> you, you, you you just got it and went down a Ed Sheeran rap, my nigga. rabbit hole recently, right? Oh my god! Like, Hold on, can I switch mine? <laughs> Ed, Ed, Ed Sheeran's nice. I did not, bro. I, like I knew, but I did like he, he's, he's one of those artists that nice. like had songs on the radio so long mm-hmm. that like I know the words to. Mm-hmm. I can sing it like like if it comes out, I can sing it instantly but i couldn't tell you who was by yeah and i finally like i went through um i went through yeah i went through his shit and my younger brother was telling me too like yo yeah he's like uh he's like amazing he's like, a dog like he's amazing he's like what dog. he like his pen like everything like mm-hmm. that one um where he's oh, i gotta fucking find it because <laughs> it's so it's so good bro like yeah. the, how he how he can write music and 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 and, and what he what he his story and how he's presented it was mm-hmm. is so crazy. Yeah, no, his 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 songs feel like films. Like every yeah. song, like the A Team, um, I See Fire, Thinking Out Loud, nigga, Thinking Out Loud is beautiful, oh, dog. That, that was a good one. Oh man, my God, I'm 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 about to play Ed on the way back to, to Jersey and Adele. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, hold on, Adele too. I I, I haven't that's had really an getting Adele. married music, bro. Bro, per- perfect. That's like getting like yeah, that's like get your life together music. Yeah. <laughs> No I cap. was listening, I was like, damn, bro, I'm tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get my shit Be together. Till we're 17. Okay. He went crazy. Spy vocals, that's my shit. He okay. went crazy. Okay, um, <laughs> okay so um, nigga, based bro. off of the genres <laughs> that we were choosing, how would y'all push your artists when you're first starting out and trying to get noticed? For me, I would have my artists do um, lots of singles and mm. content. Yeah, I was about mm-hmm. to say content. Um, and the content will include like covers. Mm. Okay, Sh- showing the full range of talent. Yeah. yeah, I respect that. Yeah, that's similar to how I would move. Like I would like TikTok, especially, would be the biggest thing. And it's not one of those because I remember we we discussed how like 
some people go viral off of comedy and start making music. I would make sure that the music is always the foundation. So when you come to my artist TikTok page, the first five posts are going to be all mm-hmm. clips of their songs. Mm-hmm. They might give you some like duet posts or some, you know, collage posts or all the other funny stuff. But like, you're going to know that they're an artist. Correct. They're, you're going to absolutely know. And like similar Instagram, they're, they're going to do reels where they do like, get ready with me and fucking like um just all, all the other stuff that the like that influencers do but it's it's going to be all purposeful for the music um and then of course like local shows local shows of course and i mean hey even if we could get on one of them national tv shows like a you know america's got talent or the voice something like that like yeah especially if you're doing pop and stuff yeah like, that. like yeah. that would that that would be my vibe too how about you will yeah i think you know i piggyback off what you guys said really just the content and really i tell this nigga to jump off the goddamn porch like i'm sorry like i'm no i'm not doing rap i'm still doing like my bad i would pop r&b yeah, yeah but like, like hold on <laughs> what the nigga look what like? Nigga? <laughs> but like but like just just in general like i meant in like in a former expression jump on the porch like just doing content and stuff like that where where we're where we're showcasing the talent and then also like you said the music has to be the forefront mm-hmm. but i also want to like nowadays, you gotta you gotta have a personality. You gotta make people kind of want like invest. Yeah. They don't have to invest that early, but if you're funny, you can do some stuff like that. We're gonna we're gonna you know flush that out a little bit though too. Mm-hmm. So, I honestly would just it would be a lot of content, some singles. I like the the covers idea was a good idea. Mm-hmm. That's a good that's idea because that's how you grab people in. Because you know it's hard to a lot of people turn shit off instantly but if you yeah. play something that they love yeah let me see what this nigga did with this yeah mm-hmm. let me see what you know exactly it's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then you know yeah i like that idea how would y'all go about pursuing um press opportunities in terms of uh articles on uh different publications or podcast interviews stuff like an on the radar or from the block like stuff like that like what specific platforms would you chase? Would you even care about getting written about? Because there's a lot of artists who still care about it, and I love it, and I do it. But I know typically the more effective stuff is them being seen and heard mm-hmm. on a, on the radar or on a podcast or even getting played as a sleeper on the Joe Budden podcast. So would you would y'all push your artists to get covered by the Pitchforks and the Rolling Stones and the Vibes or whoever? Um. <clears throat> I'll pitch it more so for interviews Mm, okay. so that um, my artist isn't only just doing like content stuff Mm -hmm. and that there is like a journalistic POV Mm -hmm. um, telling their stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll probably do on the radar because they do performances and stuff. Yeah. Um, And probably... Like, if I was to choose one of the freestyle platforms, that will be the one. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, yeah, the the press, I think creating content and press is one and the same in yeah. this current musical you landscape. You create your own press. Yeah, yeah, so I do think that, like, remember in 2020, like, Sweetie is the reason why content is so important now. Mm-hmm. I will have my artists be on, on some time and like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Why Explain the Sweetie thing. Um, I forgot what song she did. And she was like, uh, my quarantine content going up. Like during the quarantine, she just had like a friend from college that would help her produce all of this high quality because, content. Mm-hmm. Like and the post production even was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like in the creative mm-hmm. direction was crazy mm-hmm. behind it. Like it was like a like cinematic level type of content creation just solely Mm -hmm. for social media that's how she was able to land that mcdonald's deal even Mm. though people don't think that she's that like impactful in music her content Mm. like she really changed the game in 2020 she's actually good for life like she she could be a laughing stock musically but in terms of brand partnerships like she's she's, she kicked it off yeah wow yeah i never even i never even and that was during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was yeah. like when niggas was when like nobody... struggling and like trying to grasp yeah. straws. No, I'm, I guess she would do like those food cooking videos oh, too. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Her, her food was kind of all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But 
Um, she would do the daily like hurt. sweat check with with her waist trainer. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. I remember that. All that stuff. And... She did like the Friday parody, and she was like every single character, and the person like that. edited her into it. Mm-hmm. Um, she had like another beauty brand deal when she was acting like a spy, and it, like like she really set the bar for Damn. content. So my artists who I'm pushing Damn. will have to be on that level, mm-hmm. and of course, you know, the content will be you know um, tailored for their brand and mm. stuff and they will most likely be a new yorker hence the <laughs> the genre blending yeah. so oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah i you mean you send them to the um uh the the nigga who makes chopped cheeses the, 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 the never <laughs> sure you sure. will never you will never <laughs> no, go yeah. there and i gotta go OMG. on record saying <laughs> i don't know when chopped cheese got so popular so bro i never had that shit in my life and the way y'all act, I don't think I don't want that shit. The fucking national sandwich is a bacon, egg, and cheese. But yes. You, you well, heard it here first. <laughs> how would you? How I would. would you, yeah. <laughs> can't you know, forget the Bev. Never, never, never. <laughs> I can't stand this nigga. <laughs> Holy shit. You know, Yo. what I would do, you know what we, like, in, in, it's kind of cool because we, we did with this cast where you just said it, like, the journalistic aspect of like telling a real story and creating a real like not even narrative but just telling people from a journalistic aspect standpoint who this artist is who this person is that i i I like that stuff Mm -hmm. and i I think that's really important and then you know the fact you just gave me the background like how like the sweetie thing like we would be doing stuff like that hell yeah yeah Uh, and not like the chop like the chop (laughs) <laughs> unless unless they ask me personally, like I I want to do that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. We're like, okay, bro, go, like yeah. whatever. But like stuff like that, I don't, I don't know. How do you guys feel about like the the people that come up to like, oh, like what are you wearing? Like and try to act like I, everybody. Everybody knows. I like those. that. Oh, yeah, those, I like, those are cool. I like those, those cool. too. I like that. Yeah, the I'm fit check. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't mad at sidewalk talk for a bit either. Mm-hmm. Like those are cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like stuff like that too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to y'all, I would definitely be pushing for playlists, um, yeah. in, interviews, um, going to the office, doing playbacks, like mm-hmm. meeting writers, not just bombarding them through email, but getting mm-hmm. that FaceTime with them. I don't know. Then also creating content within the office. Like, it's cool when I see artists hype to take pictures next to the vibe covers that we have on the wall and stuff like that. So, you know, doing that type of stuff where they post on Instagram, thank you for having me, vibe and title and all that. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like really... Connecting with the people, you know, you can build a social media following and a huge one, but connecting with the people, actually touching the people is a whole, whole different thing. So that's something I'll be big on. Um, would you focus on building locally within a city or would you look for that nationwide expansion? I kind of had an idea of which I would answer anyways, but I figured, let me ask. Yeah. Hometown hero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm big on that shit. Yeah. yeah. I like that shit. Simple, simple. How often would they release? I know you said you would do a lot of singles. How, how often would you release? A lot too. I mm-hmm. mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's that day and age. Based on the current, yeah, it's like the day day initial day. question, the current and, trend. You know, the the stuff that we even talked about, you know, last week how, with the waterfall, with the waterfall. Well, that, mm-hmm. but also how Rock Nation is going to to dis- distro. This the reason I'm going to distro because niggas want to put out records. Mm-hmm. They want to put out records fast. They don't feel like waiting for the red tape at you know this. This and that, so that's yeah. why like now distro comes. And they're like, okay, now all these like you're probably gonna see a lot of people like from Rock Nation you didn't even know like just start mm-hmm. dropping now, like yeah. or like not that you don't know, but like people that are using their 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 distro system. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I would drop a lot, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's what you got to do. Me too. But as we've talked about on the show, I would also work these records. Right. So you got, comp- pop, you got a pop artist. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like a video, um, a, a remix. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do the acapellas. Of course, I would do the slowed and the sped ups and, you know, oh, make it a shit. sound I on like IG shit. reels and TikTok and all that. And um, I, def- I would definitely try to get syncs as soon as possible, too. 100%. Like, put me in a commercial. Put me, you know, on a movie soundtrack. And those are easier to get. I'm not, not saying they're easy to get, but they're easier to get than people realize. Like, mm-hmm. I know some artists who you know if i said their names people don't know them but mm-hmm. these niggas getting synced so mm-hmm. um that's, iman got synced iman exactly shout out to him um mm-hmm. so it's something that, that i would definitely strive for um when your artist achieves their first viral record and gets the attention of a big name act 
what is your very first next move? Like you, like you, you get in like fucking a Kim Kardashian posting your record, or you get in like a Simone Biles doing a get ready to with me to your record, tell or him, even like a, a cosign from a damn um, Rihanna, like st- something like that. Like, what are you doing when those music pages say? Rihanna just posted Will's artist. <laughs> Yo, like, check out this song. Like, what's what, what's the very next move? You gotta tell the artist to hit them. Yeah, that's mm. and that's that's usually what the deal breaker is. Why a lot of relationships in music don't form or like don't take shape because it's a lot of time, bro. It's that happens a lot. Like more people realize like where artists, other artists, be scared to hit people mm-hmm. and be like, "Yo, like, oh, I see you fucking with my song." Like, blah blah blah. Like, a lot of niggas won't do that, mm-hmm. and it's like it's. It's unfortunate, bro. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of missed opportunities that, like, people, like, that you would think, like, layups. Mm-hmm. And niggas just be, like, in their head, the ego, the artist shit. Like, it's just, like, crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But I do the same. Mm-hmm. Have them reach out to the artist and build a relationship. Not necessarily for a future collab, unless mm-hmm. it makes sense. Unless, like, one of those artists, like, you have to get on this song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, just even to just listen to what we got in the vault and just cultivate in that relationship. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my, my my pop artist would be very, like, cheery about it, like, fucking screen recorded and posted, like, oh, my God, Kim Kardashian just posted me. Like, go check out my song. Like, I, I got these many streams. EP coming soon, blah, blah, blah. I, I would definitely announce a project um, immediately. Right. After Even I, if it's visuals or something. Yeah, like, yo, project coming, by the way. Like, <laughs> stay tapped in. We'll keep running it up until then. Um, If their debut album was a major success, and I'm I'm just making these like minimum numbers like 100k first week sales charting on billboard at least a platinum record how soon before you release another project a year a yeah. year i would about to say six months to a year mm. Mm. yeah I'll, I'll do the victoria monet thing okay especially you got a platinum song that bitch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. nah nigga that's crazy yeah. then we gotta work that yeah and we probably gotta make another one uh, platinum bro. yeah like like that's yeah mm-hmm. not even gold you said platinum nigga mm-hmm. we sold 100k yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's decent. We working that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. y'all low key. Yeah, you low key. Yeah. I'm shoving it in your face. And you mm-hmm. might you might you might be walking back into the label and restructuring your deal, my nigga. I can't mm-hmm. lie type to shit. You. Because you low key, yeah. That's successful. That's yeah. that's pretty that's pretty decent. Mm-hmm. You, you, you see how platinum, viable I am. You, yeah. you see what I brought to y'all. Yep. I'm keeping the lights on this bitch. Chris Brown did that shit. Yeah, like give me more so then I can make more. I can mm-hmm. make better. Mm-hmm. Um, put me in the room with these people. Yep. Like, yeah, absolutely. Y'all absolutely. Well, I want this and that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need this and that to make that happen. Heavy on it. Right? Yeah. Facts. <laughs> and at this point, you would probably also be touring your debut project no. too. So, yeah. You're pretty um, sexy. Yeah. Yeah. But bringing people out. To the yeah. shows, of course. Preview a little unreleased track mm-hmm. on one of the stops in my hometown. Exactly. Something. Exactly. Mm. Um, okay, what's the next one? Um, I, I kind of asked this earlier. Platforms, you go. How would you handle their first public controversy? <laughs> Own it and donate to somebody. Mm. Do- Is donate. it that bad? We got to donate? Right, right. Oh, what, yeah, what's, like, the con- what's the scandal? Is it like, it's like Travis Scott niggas dying to the concert? Um, like- I mean, and. My my initial thought was something like relationship related, like cheating, okay. like either that or Don't say the other one. Yeah, yeah. Let's let us leave it at cheating. Let's leave it at cheating. Let's leave it at cheating. Let's leave it at cheating. It it honestly depends on the crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. It, it depends yeah, on sorry, so yeah. this this one is a case by case response, mm-hmm. but I would try to do my best to. Um, remedy the situation. Mm-hmm. As much as I be online talking shit, like don't say sorry, <laughs> yeah. sir. Don't apologize for shit. You ain't do mm-hmm. nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, nah. He did the right thing. <laughs> you would own it publicly. I, I, I respect that. I was, I was torn between owning up to it or just saying nothing. Um, just because it's that tough. Works. It's tough. Like you say nothing, people assume you're guilty. You say something, people expect you to say something every time something is brought up about you, whether it's true or not. So yeah. it's it's this slippery slope. So it's really tough. So I think kind of like what you said, it's case by case. Stuff with relationships, and this kind of plays into the next question I was going to ask. I, I would tell them not to publicize their relationship at all. Like if you get caught by a tabloid, 
and people are like, oh, like they're speculating. Like kind of like Lotto. Yeah. Lotto. We all know she's with 21. She's never posted him. <laughs> we all the world knows she's always my man, my man, mm-hmm. my man. Thank but we've so never much. seen them together. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that's brilliant. Yes, yeah, so like, I, I, I think that's brilliant. I do have an interview with Lotto though, after Dream Doll um dropped um some, I think, tryouts, rap tryouts. Mm-hmm. I forgot what mm-hmm. was the song. And then um the the bar about Lotto, she did she said a 21, 21 ad lib. So mm-hmm. I asked her about it. And Lotto did like a cute little swerve that wasn't really a swerve. <laughs> she, she media trained. <laughs> but it was a cute swerve, but it was just like, hold on, sis, you ain't say no. Yeah. <laughs> but I I don't, I'm not with it either. Mm-hmm. I think everyone should do what Nicki Minaj did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, keep the Unless you're a man, you have the, unless I have a male artist and he can have yeah. kids, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He can do right? whatever he wants. He can slang that dick all over the place like Quavo. <laughs> Whoa. But. <laughs> Apparently he was with Danny Lay during the fucking. I I, I did see that. I was like, I wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> very random. Very, very, very random. Mama. <laughs> um, well, how about you? If your artist um, was was spotted somewhere with their partner and it leaked online, oh, yeah. would you confirm the relationship or would you just kind of be like, yo, we'll let these niggas just let them speculate. Let them yeah. speculate. I don't want to talk like, about Marnie. <laughs> 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 you know what I seen recently? The Fuck Doja it. Cat with the one dude, uh, the new actor dude, and like. Mm-hmm. And it was like a real like, oh, she dated. It was just like, and it was like the speculation, like that type of stuff. Like, I don't know. That reminds me of like old like tabloid type of like People magazine. Yeah, cool. Coming like, out the club yeah. drunk. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, like yeah, like real super. Like that's how it used to be. Like real superstar shit. Or like we not even superstar. Business like but that. like yeah, like you would just speculate me. Like damn, them niggas like look, look, look like blah blah blah. And just like keep it moving. Mm-hmm. And like that was all social media. Like. Social media extended that conversation so far that it needed to be. Yeah. I mean, people, like, really, like, we used to just, like, walk by, like, a newsstand or something and be like, oh, or, like, pick it up. Like, duh, duh, duh. Now people, like, really, like, take that shit home with them, sleep with it, wake up with it. Like, it's, like, full-blown, like, tabloidy all yeah. the time. Yeah, it's so. Um, We kind of touched on this a little bit and just how y'all would push them, but. Um, how often would your artists post on social media? And when they got bigger, would you post less? You have to post daily. Mm-hmm. And um, my artists would post less. But I would still want the post to be, like, relatable. Like, maybe a little clap back here and there. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, my God, I thought this person was above that. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, no, bitch. Check the numbers, ho. Yeah. 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 Oh. I don't know, bro. I don't. I don't know. You know who has a great Instagram that never deleted none of his posts, <laughs> and like you can see him come up from like literally nothing to who he is. Twenty One Savage. Mm. If you go back to Twenty One Savage, good like niggas lot, don't delete shit, bro. It's like a lot of like shit, like a lot of shit that should be deleted, like yeah. shit that like you like like I think there's one. Like, it has to be like I, I don't even want to say this. Cause I'm gonna get in trouble. Like yeah, I'm not gonna say it. Like I swear to somebody in the back, like cooking crack in like one of his pictures or like <laughs> something nuts. Like so, that type of stuff is cool to me. Cause you got it. Like I love going back and artists and like seeing them come up and like just keep scrolling. You can see like just like their life just changing. Mm-hmm. Um. So I would tell my artist to post as much as you want. I mean, just use discretion, bro. I don't know. Like, yeah. post as much as you want. I do. I don't like. I hate when niggas are about to drop and they delete everything. Yeah, I think that's like that's the corniest shit. A, like, like, leave the mysterious shit to the mysterious niggas. Yeah. That shit don't work for everyone. Yeah, like, or like, you know who Instagram used to be fire? Like, Uzi's Instagram used to be fire, but he archived a lot of his shit. Mm. And like, archiving's cool, I guess, because you, you can undo it and, and like, but, like, you know, yeah, I, I bet it's tough, like, if some of those are, like, your favorite artists, especially, like, being younger and being, like, a kid coming up and, like, seeing some of your favorite artists, like, delete, like, hella posts off their Instagram that you, like, have a special connection with as a fan, I feel like it's fucked up. So, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never let my artists delete shit. Mm-hmm. Unless it was, like, something, like, you know, of course. But Yeah. Like, my, 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 my artists would post once a day as well, and it would be, like varied between like promoting something and then just pics or pics of you out you know mm-hmm. you at the met gala you at a baseball game mm-hmm. you doing random shit and then stuff showing your personality like giving people that balance i, I think you know as tough as it is <clears throat> you never want to lose that that relatability that like common touch that you have like i think one of the great things about j cole throughout his career is no matter how big he's got and how rich he is he's always just felt like one of us and you can't say that about everybody 
Um, and so I think, and it might be a little different as a pop artist, but you know, like the way Taylor Swift relates to all these little, little teenage white girls and, and even these older white women, like, you know, th- with her love stuff and all that, like just the way she writes. So maintaining that common touch by, you know, obviously promoting stuff, but still being yourself on social media. You know who's yeah. good at it? That's not, that's not in music. And he gets a lot of hate and whatever, but uh, Katie's really good at that. Oh yeah, Katie's Katie, Katie one of is us. himself. <laughs> like, he's one of I us. Yeah, the that's that, that's, that's, that's that's literally his bio on Twitter. Like I'm me, I do me, and yeah, I chill. Do, I do me and chill. Like, and bro, he's really like he's <laughs> really like a regular ass video nigga, games. Bro. Nigga be doing fake jump shots in the club, like <laughs> smoking <laughs> glass, <laughs> relaxing, chilling. Like bro, he's cool. It's like he's really like chill, bro. Yeah. Like he's really like yeah, he's one of us. Like yeah. that shit is tight. Nah, big, big I like that. Big respect to Katie. Um. So we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. Both of you have hybrid artists, so like you would collaborate with other genres, like from from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, would, I don't want I don't want them to be banking on the collab. Of course, I would like my artists to at least have one or a minimum of one single under their belt, a solo mm-hmm. single. Um, and like the collab would just be like a plus, like mm-hmm. a oh, like like a cultural moment like yeah. you know like we're blending the genres so like you know like maybe like a daddy yankee mm-hmm. or something like a og latin person like an og rapper yeah. so yeah not in the beginning I, I want i want my artists to be established as right. someone who can hold their own weight and make their own hits yeah yeah um yeah, I guess I don't know if I'd be looking for it right away mm-hmm. if it presented itself and it was some shit that yeah, you couldn't say no to, like, mm-hmm. of course. But yeah, I I wouldn't be looking for it right away. Yeah, yeah, I would I I would I would want them to establish themselves to like not be one of those artists who it's like they don't do any features at all, but at yeah. least the first couple singles, the first like two EPs before they do an album, it's just gonna be them. Mm-hmm. Maybe work with different producers, but it's just gonna be them. And then you start to let some other people in, in into their world. Um, I know, like, some, like, Target features I would have for them is, like, a Calvin Harris. Like, get on one of those Calvin 100%. Harris albums. Thus far. Work with, like, a DJ Snake. Um, eventually link up with, like, a fucking one of these new joints, like a Sabrina Carpenter or Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, and, like, I'm, I'm telling them, yo, make sure that you watch them on that song. Like, like, well, watch them. Like, like, get in the studio with them. Don't, don't make it a send back and forth type joint. Like, you go into the studio with them. You spend the time with their engineer, all that. Like, you, you getting the full treatment that they get, but, like, watch them on that song. Yeah. Like, this watch is, them or I'm going to watch you. Yeah. Like, this, this is, this is, this is the moment. Like, you, you go on, you go on a Rucker Park and there are NBA players there. Like, you, you got to bring it. You got to bring it. So. I would definitely have some dream features, but you know, I would also let shit happen organically. Like I, I might meet someone at the courtside at, at the Laker game, be like, "Yo, like," I'm saying, like, yeah, you know, they they meet them, exchange numbers, um, and kind of go that way. Like, just kind of see where where the trends go, because it's like, there's also gonna be people who reach out to them. Like they they have a platinum record, they're selling, they're charting on Billboard, so all that motion, DMs gonna gonna be popping. So we're we gonna be you know sit back and have the the luxury of being able to be selectful. Like, eh, fucking. This nigga, nah, you don't got to work with him. Her? Yes. Or <laughs> work with her. Him? Yeah. Try it out. Just see if it works. It's not a big deal. Um, so, yeah. It, it, it would take some time. But, like, I would definitely have some Target, like, pop house features. And then also a couple rappers, a couple R&B singers. Um, but make sure that they're featuring on their album as opposed to my artist featuring on their stuff. I mean. Type shit. Yeah. I nah, mean, the, I the, 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 they could do a couple. But, like, the majority of the collaborations, make sure that they're jumping on your stuff mm-hmm. so yeah so i would do it um lastly what would their signature ability be like for example like a wale we look at him for his songwriting someone like mariah carey we look at her for her vocals she's also an amazing underrated songwriter like an yeah. elite songwriter but the like her her fucking signature whistle register that's the thing she's known for the most next level like, well, what would each of y'all artists' signature be? Can we choose be? one of those? Like, can we, like, I would, I, nigga, I want Mariah Carey's voice. I'll take out her voice box. <laughs> nigga. I think she has, like, yeah. like either mm-hmm. between her or Whitney Houston, give me one of those. Okay. I'm oh. taking, I'm take. I'll take, yeah, I'll take Whitney's. Like, as long as she can sing or my artist can sing, like, Whitney, and then, can we do, like, two? Yeah, like, can yeah. we do, like, one big one and yeah. then, like, 
one that like is a baseline talent. Yeah, she it's, it's kind of like in two K. You, you, mm-hmm. You're you're like a Rebuilding. slashing d- defender or something <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> so mine would be singing and then knowing how to perform. Okay. Also, you got to be able to perform. Mm. Mm. That's, that's an important distinction. Right. Yeah, you could be a really good singer, but not perform well. Right. Yeah. Important distinction. Mine will be a certified hit maker, oh, like a like a whiz kid, good. like mm. someone who like that's all their one. shit slap. Mm. That's a good one. Facts. And like, um, mm. there'll be a good uh, feature artist. Okay. Mm. There'll okay. be someone who will do good on features. I like that. I like that. Yeah, vocals will be number one for me. Um, and then songwriting would be the second thing. Like you, you're gonna get that bread writing for for these other people mm-hmm. and in all genres too. And like you, you're gonna, you're gonna be one of those like people that they don't realize. Like kind of like Beam, Beam who's <laughs> allegedly written for Drake, written for Beyonce, all that. He's like, all like, that, bro. like you, you're gonna be one of those people who whose pen is getting all around the game. And people, people and don't, don't realize. Know. Yeah, yeah. But Vito's you also like that too. Who Vito? Mm. He wrote like BTS, mm-hmm. a bunch of people, Usher, a bunch mm-hmm. of people. Yeah, yeah. So like you're gonna have motion. Like, like you're not gonna be one of those artists who's known as a songwriter who don't got motion yourself. You're gonna have motion yourself, but you also gonna write for all these other people too. And then if someone puts a mic in front of your face, like you you're gonna knock that shit out the park. So yeah, that's what I would do. Miss Two B's ones was good though. Like yeah, hit yeah. maker, because that means that means your shit's like charting and like you're like you're like, like you're like yeah like, like you, you're all like the time. yeah damn. you 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 got like a Latin Chris Brown <laughs> yeah because even still Chris Brown is yes. on the charts yes. making hits he's a highly mm. coveted feature yep and he can do different genres hit maker. yes mm-hmm. I got a Latino Chris Brown mm-hmm. that's yeah. wild mm-hmm. I like that that's fine that's fine I fuck with that is that bad um, buddy hmm? a Latino Chris Brown right because I'm just like <laughs> is, is that bad, does that buddy? exist. <laughs> I was like, oh. I'm like, it wait, hold on. Like, it, it might be bad. We had to make one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all trying to come up? <laughs> find um, one right now. Yeah, those are right. all the questions I prepared. Do y'all, do y'all think there's anything that, in terms of the construction and the progression of their careers that we missed? Like, we covered controversies. We covered going viral. We covered release frequency. We covered all, the, especially you, Will, you as a manager, like, I'm thinking right now. We covered playlisting and press stuff. I mean, if the artist is signed to a major or not, does that matter? No, no. I I I wanted to leave that in in your hands. I mean, ultimately, I I would definitely have them get signed personally, as as a pop artist. And in, in this yeah. current era, yeah, you, you getting signed. <laughs> I think I think I think you know, especially in in this this day and age now, there's a lot of these. You know, a lot of these bigger labels have sub labels and smaller labels mm-hmm. that have smaller smaller teams and smaller rosters, but are able to focus more yes. on these. You know, that's what kind of we got going on with cash, yeah. but still have these big label services that you're, you know, that you can, oh, we need to make a phone. Oh, big we need backing to do this. Yeah, resources. Like, yeah. yeah. So, like, they still have the resources. It's mm-hmm. just more focused, oriented on the artists and smaller teams. Yeah. And I prefer you, that. Yeah. And you, and most people, like, that's, that's where most people are going now, yeah. you know? And Especially like, when you're like coming up, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, there are some big artists who just signed directly to the the like housing mm-hmm. right. label or whatever, like the major one, like mm-hmm. signed directly to UMG, signed mm-hmm. directly to Warner. Mm-hmm. But you know, mm-hmm. if you're starting out, yeah, you 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 go to go to a, a subsidiary, mm-hmm. you gotta yeah. work your way up from there. I mean, so. like you, like especially like you guys see it now. Like if you if you scroll down at, at whatever you're listening to and see all like the little shit broken up, who they're signed to, and like mm-hmm. what you know what's going on, it's usually not. It's usually not just like the one big label. It's always like something before, like a, maybe like you know, mm-hmm. and it's I, that's that's the day and age we're kind of in now, which yeah. is yeah. fire, mm-hmm. and like that's why you kind of see, I don't know, teams be a little bit more focused on artists because you know what happened when streaming first started, and we kind of talked about this right before you, like you know, a lot of these labels expected these artists teams to become ready to go. Mm-hmm. They expect you to have a manager, tour tour agent, yeah. this and, you know, boom, 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 and ready to go and, like, not really that much development because, you know, I feel like, and this is a big conversation, I feel like people's, I feel like labels mind, like, when streaming first, like, came out, they thought, like, like, they really thought niggas was coming, like, 
with like three albums ready, everything go, like let's go boom boom <laughs> they boom. They move them like that. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like it was like nah, you know what I'm saying? Some are like that. That's like a rare case. Like you might find some of that, but most of the time you find a talent nigga can rap. You know what I'm saying? You believe in it. That you know this and that, and the A and R believed in it, and then the streaming shit happened. The numbers came, and like people would see these huge numbers on these viral songs and see these artists come in and thinking that they're like fucking Michael Jackson, the Motown six gang or whatever. Like it, it, it wasn't that it was niggas yeah. just like hitting, hitting not a lick, but like hitting, like going viral. Yeah. And like well, lightning in a bottle, lightning yeah. in a bottle. Most yeah. of these kids are young. You don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? It was friends managing homies. Like it was like, it's always homie help. At first. Yeah. Like you feel yeah. me? So it was just yeah. always. Yeah. It yeah. was, you know. But without artist development, I just want to say we would have never had DMX. Like, yeah. I don't think you people understand stuff. how important development is. Like, he was already, like, you know, abusing substances. And if, like, mm -hmm. someone just wrote him off immediately, like, mm -hmm. we would not have had any of that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Like, my artist needs chance. to get developed, too. Yeah. yeah. You got to give people a chance. And beyond the music, like, as a human, like, mental health resources, health stuff. Even as a big nigga right now, fitness stuff like you. You are, are not big, Armand. Well, you you can be bigger. That. I appreciate that. <laughs> Shit, I appreciate. I'm that. just saying. I know body dysmorphia because like when <laughs> we're younger, when you look at them younger pictures, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. You are not Thank okay. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's hmm. it's 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 been a little personal culture shock as a former three sport athlete, but um, I'm, I'm working. I'm and, working. And you closer to thirty than twenty, so that's just all it is. You yeah. got to eat better. That's all. You I'm good. doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking natural juices yep. every morning now. You good. You know what I'm saying? Intermittent fasting. But <laughs> You got this, me. friend. Thank you, friend. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, the fitness stuff is going to be key. They're, they're seeing a therapist. They're, they're um, like, all, all of that stuff. Like, that's, yeah, I, it's, it's just super important. As they get bigger, as they're just on the road, as they're dealing with all, the, all of the, the stuff, like, f financial, accountant, and um, yeah, just all putting everyone in place to make their lives as easy as possible so they can just be the best artist and human that they can be, um, especially when you get to that level where you have those resources, and taking advantage of all of it, mm -hmm. making sure the big label pays for it. Like, yo, yo, you, you, you see what we're bringing in every year. Like, you niggas haven't been in the red since you signed us. So <laughs> get, get my artist, uh, get my artist a therapist, <laughs> get my artist a personal trainer, get him a nutritionist, personal shit, like all, all that, all that. We need all that. And, and we're we going to get you the money back. <laughs> Ooh, you know, I think a good question would be, um, not a good question, but there's what you just said and like what you want. You definitely need a good relationship with your lawyer and finding the right, yeah. the right entertainment lawyer, the yes. right lawyer that makes sense yeah. for you, for your client. And then also just like for, just for the team. Mm -hmm. Like, cause sometimes you get these rock star lawyers and like, they'll just tell you shit. They're not explaining to you like yeah. whatever, how, you got to get get you a lawyer that kind of explains it too mm -hmm. in layman terms or whatever some regular people terms cuz you know we're regular people and like you're a lawyer for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting like Rondell. Yeah. Like just like it's just it's just He it's got the important. locks out they bad boy deal. There you go. I'm like, Rondell. Like, see? Where? There you go. <laughs> and the stuff you ask, like that type of stuff could be worked into a deal. They just don't feel like doing it cuz it's work. Yeah. But it can be. It can be. So so fun exercise, because um, I, I thought you know we we spent a lot of time rightfully critiquing this current state of music. It's so like all right, with all of our expertise and experiences and varied just thoughts, like how would we push someone based off of what we see, based off of the things that we like and we don't like? What would we do to push them? And I mean, to me, this all sounded like a recipe for a successful hybrid artist or just um, just a pop artist. So I agree. Fun, fun times. Yeah. Fun times. Yeah. Listeners, let us know how y'all thought, uh, how, how y'all felt our our uh, my two K artist uh, building process was. What genre would you put your artist in? How would you push them? How would you handle controversy? Um, all that good stuff. But yeah, that is another episode of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, Panya Head Top. Um, <laughs> we will again. We will not be here live next week, but we will have an episode for you. We'll be back the following week, and we'll have a guest for you as well. So that'll be very exciting. Um, but of course, for myself, the bald nigga bombshell, for the Panamanian princess, Miss Two Bs, and for Mister Where There's a Will, There's a Way. Will we want y'all to stay safe, stay humble, and of course, stay busy.